Hello, and welcome to New Game Who Dis, the show where we vacillate between having fun and letting down everyone, including ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere in the middle there. How's everyone doing tonight? Great. Somewhere in the middle. <laughs> Some great. In the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I try to, I, I try to inject a level of somewhere between humility and keeping it real into those little <laughs> <laughs> Try not to sentence. have that much accuracy in our descriptions uh, ahead of the game. I don't know if you uh, are aware of that. I don't have accurate. to have, I don't have to be that accurate, you're saying? No, you don't have to be that accurate. You can just straight up lie. You can say, we're having a great time. We always... Uh, satisfy everyone including yeah. our viewers <laughs> yeah matthew you've played games with uh, that guy troy before right i think that's what he does on every game he just lies yeah <laughs> i mean you don't have to <laughs> fall back on that level of hucksterism but you can still <laughs> sell it a little bit well i'm i i i had a great time last session i oh, will say me yeah, too oh think. man a really good time i was I will say I am a huge fan of like sci-fi stuff, but I'm not like a Trekkie and I never attach myself to any specific franchise. And everyone was like, oh, this is just like, you know, Star Trek and this and that. And I was like, oh, I get it, but I don't quite get it. But man, I had a blast last episode and I was very excited for tonight. Yeah, it's a it's a cool. I mean, it's a it's a oh, it's its own game that character creation, and you, you can get really into it really fast. Well, tell I don't want to speak for you all. T talk to me about your experience with the character creation of Traveler, uh, and don't say anything that Mongoose wouldn't approve of. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, speak freely. I I love it. It's 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 so it really is my favorite way to kind of get into a game is working forwards that way i think we we, I, we talked about it but most games that we play you kind of start with the concept of a finished product in your head and you work backwards from there you say like oh i'm starting as a sorcerer as a elven sorcerer or whatever and you work your way back to kind of justify that skill set and everything that history whereas this way you're working forward you don't know where it will go you don't know where you'll end up and so much of it is determined by the dice and so you kind of have to give yourself up to the randomness and let the story like you know kind of fill in the gaps of the fiction as you go which is so much more fun for me i just i love it it's great i felt less like a sculptor and more like an archaeologist if that makes mm. sense like a sculptor would see a shape in a stone and then unveil it slowly by crafting, whereas an archaeologist would just uncover what's already there. And it's somewhere in between, kind of like the intro to the show. It's somewhere in between disappointing everyone and having a great time. <laughs> uh, but I had such a wonderful time. I think I told you at some point in between uh, last recording and this one that, like, I forgot I was playing. And I was just having a wonderful time. Like completely forgot I was like on a stream, which is hard with a light and a camera and the microphone and everything else. And I was just like loving discovering new details about the characters, all of them, not just mine. Yeah, you guys did such a great job. I mean, was in, I, all I have to do is kind of flip back and like as just flip back and forth on pages and read stuff as you roll the, di roll the dice. So I just, it was fun for me to watch. Oh, and by the way, I should say, uh, obviously we are a person down. Alicia unfortunately couldn't be with us tonight and we will miss her dearly. Uh, she also knocked it out of the park as per usual. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my God. God. So good. Her it's so her, her character is so good. All your characters are so great. Uh, but yeah, we'll miss her. But we're going to carry on in her stead, and hopefully, she'll be back with us next week. Um, but yeah, I mean, I want, I want. We have a lot to get through, and I want to hear. You know, we ultimately, I want to. Like, you know, we we did, we ran out of time. Like you really could do three episodes of just character creation if you wanted to. You're building out a party, and I I would watch the hell hell out of that. But I really also wanted to take the game out for a spin and get to go through an adventure. So we decided to have you all finish your character creation off air, and you you sent me emails. I got on the phone with a couple of you, and then we we walked through it. And now I'm going to have you introduce these characters, and then we're going to dive right in. Um, but I do want to say, speaking of, uh, I just mentioned Mongoose. Uh, Mongoose is, again, very generously supporting this stream tonight, surprisingly, you know, after, you know, given our track record. Um, <laughs> and they're giving away three physical copies and three digital copies of the core rulebook. And again, this is a global giveaway. So... No matter where you are in the world, you are eligible for one of those physical copies. So Brennan's going to put a link to enter up in the chat and uh, announce the winners in the chat by the end of the stream as well. Um, so 
I uh, get on that. But for now, I want to jump in and talk through what has happened in these characters' lives since we last met them. Um, Skid, why don't we start with you and Aaron Bridger? When we last we left him, he was a, a young man. He came from a naval family of uh, somewhat uh, illustrious repute. And he uh, went to a state school, a party school, the Ohio State of the of the galaxy, if you will, <laughs> but ended up uh, doing extremely well. I think he and- actually did. I think he went to Ohio State. <laughs> he went to the he Ohio went to Terra. State University. Like he grew up on the planet Curland, which is a really like pleasant garden world near the, near Terra. It's uh, within it's within the same sector. And I think he he went out of out of uh, planet for school, and he went back. <laughs> he went paid, out of paid the uh, off planet tuition, but uh, yeah, I think he went to OSU. Go Buckeyes. The, the the Ohio State the University. Ohio State University. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, he uh, he then graduated and began what was shaping up to be a pretty illustrious naval career of his own. He was commissioned almost immediately, got uh, got assigned as a, 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 on the line crew of a naval vessel. Uh, and what has happened to Aaron Bridger since then? I think he started out because he was a very skilled attorney. He was a skilled lawyer. Right. So he's got Advocate 3. So he started out the the JAG Corps, but he, you know, he loved the law, but I think he really wanted his own command. And so he ended up getting, uh, I think what happened was because in his fourth term, his vessel participated in a notable military engagement. So I think he spent most of his career in the Spinward Marches, uh, which is sort of one of the default sort of adventuring sectors uh, for, for Traveler. And it's just, it's, it's sort of borders with the Jodani consulate, which is kind of the evil, evil in quote, human empire. And there's Aslan around and different like human confederations and everything. So there's a lot going on, piracy and everything. So I think he was stationed out there. There was a, a combat and his, he, he was, uh, his captain was killed. He was the highest ranking officer, his commander, and he took the con. And he guided the ship through the engagement, learning naval tactics in the process gaining a rank in that and so he gained his own command um after that point and uh he eventually participated in a diplomatic mission uh to alderaan or something <laughs> and so he was promoted to promoted to captain like for that uh that happened and then he tried he really was gunning for admiral i kept i was just like i really want to make admiral I got a little older. Admiral. I lost the point of Dex. Yeah, <laughs> he made Admiral, <laughs> and I didn't quite make it. I fell short, so he retired because he was just like, I don't. If I'm not, my career is stagnating. Clearly, uh, they they don't have any higher plans for me. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to go home. So he is uh, he mustered out. He got seventy thousand credits, a couple of ship shares, some more education. Uh, they gave him a very nice uh, laser rifle. We talked about plasma rifle as uh, a mustering out gift, but there's actually tech level 16, which is beyond like imperial standard. So I didn't think. Oh, that okay. Sense. So they gave him like an engraved, uh, uh, like a uh, gold inlaid uh, laser rifle um, with his with his name on it and the name of the ship. And uh, yeah, and so he. You know, got really lucky. He did get hurt at one point, but no permanent injuries. And uh, yeah, he got like one point of dex down. Uh, so he's just getting a little old, but he's been lucky. And he doesn't want to press his luck anymore. So he's heading home. Okay. So, and you're out somewhere in the Spinward Marches uh, yeah. looking for a way home. Okay, great. Um, how old are you by the end? How old were you by the uh, end of it? 42. 42. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right, Sydney, when we last left, Titania Weslin, she too was having the beginnings of an illustrious career, but in the uh, Imperial Interstellar Scout Service, and she, I, I believe, she had she helped discover a new world and open relations with a, a, you know, a new species, maybe. Um, and she, so she was, I believe, she was automatically promoted at one point because she was doing <laughs> so well. But start you an engineer by trade, but uh, building a, a great career. What happened? in the time since we left her. Yeah, I just gotta say, I was rolling like a boss. There are so many (laughs) bad things that could have happened. And even off air, like I felt bad that I was rolling so well, because I was like, I have to go back to Matthew and be like, yeah, nothing really bad happened. I'm like completely (laughs) fine. Uh, 
but that's her character. That's who she is. But uh, yeah, Titania, you know, got to go to college and just sort of took off and got into the scout program and got immediately promoted. And she has just been working since she was 17, like left her home planet, started her career basically. Um, and at 34, she mustered out and retired and partly due to her unfulfillment with the scout service like she re- she felt like she had reached her her peak even though she didn't make it in the highest rank of her career um but also her father died and mm. she had to make this really difficult decision of leaving her position to go back home uh to be with her family she decided to leave her position and i got i think 50,000 creds i got a ship I mean, she really got the most benefits you could possibly get um, and left on. (laughs) You sent it to me and I was like, really? (laughs) Yeah, Matthew Matthew was like, hey, I don't want to say you did this wrong, but did you do this wrong? And then we went over it and I didn't. And I didn't didn't. do it wrong. She She just just rolled extremely well. (laughs) Yeah, Titania is a lucky one. And I rolled ship twice. And I only read later that you can't have two ships, so I had to roll again. Um, But anyway... So she mustered out and kind of got all the the benefits. um, And she was going back home to uh, the dust planet where she's from, to the meat quarries. And she was reaching the asteroid belt, which is kind of on the parameters of where her planet is. And she couldn't go past it. She didn't want to see her mother's face and she didn't want her mom to see her face now 34 years old she hadn't been home in 17 years since she left for school she just never went back and she kept in touch with her siblings and with her family but when it came down to it she just could not face the reality of what her father's death meant to her she loves her father so much and uh she turned around and she decided that she would just kind of do scouting outside of the scout service it's all she's ever known and she was like i'll just keep doing it you know i have the money i have the ship and i have the means um well, and she the promise of a ship the promise of a ship as we discussed pre-show <laughs> she's she's going to get her ship for unknown reasons but uh i did get a plus one enemy so somewhere within that whole um Ooh. interact yeah somebody is Uh, not happy with her and possibly because of that situation of never returning home or maybe the planets that she's visited uh, who knows that is to be discovered Mm, all right great yes we'll talk about that ship in a moment Uh, that's (laughs) gonna be important all right grant uh i don't even know how to introduce your character because uh there are three names i have written down in my notes (laughs) um Jude Wolverson, Levi Blaze, and Butch <laughs> Kyberg, is it? Cairo. 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 Yes. Butch Cairo. Well, he, I, I, as I recall, he flunked out of college. Uh, <laughs> he was holding a torch for one, uh, for maybe Titania Weslin, but maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, um, and then he eventually began a career as a journalist, as a muckraking journalist, and uh, gained a bit of notoriety uh, exposing some corruption on the the world he was working. That's uh, where Levi Blaze was born, the person. Right. Uh, we started his, as his, Jude Wolverson, the birth name. Levi Blaze came out of that. Nom de plume, right. And so what has happened to your character <laughs> since then? <laughs> Butch Cairo was on assignment doing a a bit of travel journalism for a side hustle and um, life event maybe took him to an uninhabited planet. He uh, was such a large fish in a small pond that he was able to climb up the ranks of this planet's social strata into the stratosphere, as it were. (laughs) Since you last saw Butch Cairo, he has attained an insane 17 rank in social. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> like the emperor is like 18. Yeah. It's, I it's, like to think there's a whole section in the core book, rule book about <laughs> some characters with high social standing can be actually uh, like a detrimental to gameplay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like to think that he is a bit of Bob Woodward, All the President's Men, the Rage Peril series that recently came out meets Larry King like he he was a very serious hard working kind of wonderfully 
talented behind the scenes journalist and then he got a little bit famous and a little bit you know he got a tv spot he got he basically turned into like michael wilbon and tony kornheiser on pardon the interruption and as soon as he got that tv money in, that's where his social standing started climbing up um yeah so i think he's essentially we decided uh when we talked on the phone that he's been knighted at this yeah. point probably for sure we're the 17 social standing. <laughs> to, yeah. to, like, the book has a table. There's a table for that uh, of where you might fall based if you wanted to look into to nobility. Uh, yeah, 11 is night. At one point, you 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 had to you got like you you earned an extra social standing, and that put you at 11. And I was like, oh, maybe you got knighted like, for your services to the the empire or something. And then 15 is the highest uh, the chart goes, and that is uh, Duke. <laughs> yeah. So, but you don't have to be nobility. You can also have a high social standing for many other reasons. Yep. And but we like the idea of you being Sir Sir Bush or <laughs> Sir <Yeah>. Levi. <laughs> or like a guy that gets an honorary doctorate at some yeah. college somewhere and demands <laughs> yes. on being called professor or doctor wherever he goes because of it. Um, so yeah, I rolled the way that that happened was, uh, you get a, either the cash benefit or the, uh, actual kind of, uh, what just general benefit. What, what do they call the other thing you can choose for the final? Yeah, rolls? We're talking about the mustering out benefits. So yeah, yeah, you can either roll for a, for cash or for a benefit. Yeah. So, um, I, I took the benefits on most everything and on twos and fours, I get plus one social. So, so um, yeah. that's, that's how I got that high. Um, very excited. I have three contacts now as opposed to an enemy like Sydney has. Um, and be useful in a longer campaign. I also have two, I also have two allies. I just want to say I have two contacts, but I had to turn <laughs> one into an enemy. Oh, Ooh, I like yeah. that. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah, um, how old did how old are you it's the answer to everything in the universe it's 42 uh same oh, as so, uh. Uh, so i see why the the uh childhood relationship between you and titania might not be uh <laughs> might not have ended up being a relationship <laughs> i'm 34. <laughs> well, maybe, wait how does that work out how does that make sense because well, you can end like you ended you ended your creation earlier no i Grand. know but oh uh, the story was well maybe we did know each other in school or maybe one of us stepped into a wormhole and <laughs> broke the time space content. Titania, <laughs> yeah, she was she was away for so long and all oh, right, you yeah, were in your back and yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. That's crazy. Space, or maybe, space, space. Maybe one of you had a sibling and you knew each other through your siblings through through your siblings or something. You know, Titania, you don't look a day above thirty four. I don't know how <laughs> at forty two. Insane, you said that. You look exactly like you're forty two. Wow. wow. <laughs> All right. Well, there's a, a couple last steps we have to do to finish off character creation. And thank you guys for doing that off air. And apologies that we didn't do it on air. We just want to get to the story. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is the Universal Personality Profile, or the UPP. Uh, so this is a throwback to Traveler 1E, and it's kind of a social security number of sorts for, uh, for space. Basically, it's your characteristics in hexadecimal base 16 format. To get not to get too nerdy about it, uh, but basically, uh, it's so your your characteristics, your strength, dex, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, digits zero through nine are represented as digits zero through nine, and then digits ten through fifteen are letters A through F. So if you have, I mean, actually, Grant, you're uh, you're off the charts here. So your seventeen would be an H, I guess. Right. <laughs> So yeah, so if you are, and the average traveler is someone who has a seven for all characteristics, so they'd be seven, 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 seven. But uh, you know, this doesn't—it's not really like something that doesn't really have any kind of mechanical effect so much as it's just kind of cool and a cool thing to put on your character sheet. Um, and then the other thing, while you're working on that, I will tell you is that uh, based on this adventure, you're all going to be taking a skills package. So a skills package is essentially. A basic set of skills that a party or crew can take. Uh, it's assumed to be just like the basic skills you would need to, you know, be a spacefarer or be an adventurer. Uh, and the skill package we're taking is the traveler skill package. So, if you don't have these already, you get all of you: pilot one, deception one, electronics one, gunner one. Gun combat one of whatever specialty you want. Uh, persuade one, stealth one, and medic one. And I'm Wait, gonna drop say that. it again. <laughs> I'm gonna drop it. I'm gonna drop it in the chat for you. Uh, 
And what happens so, were we to already be skilled in that? Nothing? Nothing. So if you already have any of those at you know one at level one or higher, nothing happens. Um, okay. But yeah, you, all, you get all of those as just kind of a base level skill. We have to pick for like electronics pilot. Do we have to pick a specialty? You do have to, you do have to pick a, 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 a specialty for yes. So I'll, I'll leave that to you. Um, and we also don't, you don't have to decide right now if it comes, you know, we can also retcon it, uh, okay. as is useful. Um, but with that, uh, what's, so basically we're going to start, we're going to start this adventure, which is the module is called, uh, March's adventure one. It's funny. You mentioned the spin word March is good because that's exactly where we are. Uh, high and dry, uh, available Ooh. now, wherever you get your traveler modules. Um, so I, if I can, I'll direct you to roll 20. I want to show you a little map of, uh, the, of explored space in the galaxy. Uh, you should see a outline in red. You know, you can see the Imperium at the center. We are going to be sp in the spinward marches up here as in Skid described it perfectly. You're right kind of on the border of the Jodani consulate. There's this great, the great rift in dividing you from the Imperium and the Aslan high rate. Um, but specifically, you're going to be at uh, Fulmerian. Oh, actually, but let me show you this other thing I pulled out. So this is from a great website called TravelerMap.com, and you can zoom out. So I just want to show you, for the purposes of scale, also I'll keep you on roll twenty. Uh, you can see the galaxy <laughs> here. That little red spot of red spot of chartered space. That is all known explored <laughs> space. Yeah. <laughs> I was having a great night until you brought up how small we are in the scope of the galaxy. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. But anyway, I will now I will now direct you to you're in we are in the spin room marches. We are going to be in the sword world subsector. Yes. Uh, and this is a, a great uh, hex map here. Uh, we're going to find yourselves on planet Flammarion. Uh, and we were trying to figure out before we went on the air like what's a good like culture check in Traveler. Do you roll like a science, like a planetology check or so? And we couldn't really figure it out because, you know, we didn't really spend a lot of time on it. But Sydney, you had a good idea. So let's just have you roll that and we can you're, let's see what Titania knows about Flammarion. Let's find out. I was saying uh, Titania studied. She has her science and uh, she studied xenology. So she's going to roll uh, hers. Cool. See how smart she is, college so, yeah. kid. So you'll you'll roll two D, add you add your skill your skill bonus, and then also add the characteristic modifier. So now, this here's would my, probably be intellect or education. Here's, here's my question. So I have a zero in science. Does it mean that if you don't have a skill at all in the category, you can't roll for that skill? You can. You just roll at a minus three modifier. Copy. Okay. So because you have level zero, you you just roll, you know, with no with no neg with no penalty. Plus my intellect. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, eleven. Nice. Well, I was going to call this an average, uh, a, somewhere between a routine and an average check. You killed it. So I'll tell you that uh, Flammarion is a buzzing starport. Uh, the high port, anyway, is a buzzing starport in orbit around the planet Flammarion in the sp spinward marches of the Bowman Arm. Uh, so you're outside the Imperium space, but close enough that the influence is fairly strong. Uh, ships bound for the Five Sisters subsector usually navigate along the arm, which is where a lot of the business comes from. It's quicker to do the Caledbolg Enos Flammarion run, but politics can interfere at Enos, which is run by, run by the Sword, Sword Worlds Confederation. Um, the Bowman Belt which is nearby, which is one of the wonders of the Spinward Marches. It's one of the largest, most extensive planetoid belts ever discovered, and it occupies the equivalent of five planets worth of orbits in one contiguous belt. Uh, there's a, a pretty, there's an unknown number of belter communities there. Flammarion itself is a fairly unappealing world with a very thin atmosphere, but the high port itself is usually is the kind of center for traffic. It's home to an Imperial Navy base and a scout service way station, which makes sense for a lot of your characters why you might find yourselves there. You know, there's shops, bars, restaurants, recreation facilities. Uh, you would also know this has a, a law a, a law level four, so side arms and blade weapons can be carried, but anything larger than that would attract attention from security forces. Uh, discrete body armor is also so okay, uh, but most bars and other facilities will require all weapons to be checked at the door. Uh, most of you did you did your shopping off air, but this would be a good place to pick up any uh, supplies. Uh, and where we're going to begin, Titania has an appointment with Mr. Anders Kasari of the Imperial Scout Service. But I want to give you a moment to think about how 
how you might have all come together as a party and also Alicia's character is going to be with you as well you know we're going to maybe perhaps you know she's uh waking up from cryo sleep or something you know on the on the or she's you know the, whatever she did to get out here we'll work on that once she's back but how do you think you all came together uh i think this is where uh, for captain bridger i think this is just this is where the transfer of captaincy was happening. Like the new captain was taking over his ship, was at the star, the Imperial star base here, and so um, they, I think they probably, probably offered him passage to, you know, take him back like into Imperial space, like whatever he wanted. But I think he was kind of. He got a little bit of a taste of adventure. Um, like he feels like sort of that he wasted a lot of his time in the Navy uh, working as, a, as an attorney. <laughs> and like he got a little bit of like action and he was just like, he fell in love with it. And so he was just like, he wants a little bit more adventure before he goes back and maybe like teaches at the Academy or something. Cause in an education of, of uh, 15. Oh yeah. So yeah. So he's he's uh, like got a doctorate, you know, be a law be a law professor, or something. a law professor or something. So it's just like before he does that, like he wants to have some fun uh, before before he goes back. So he says, like, I'll find my own way back. So I think he, um, but as far as like hooking up with these guys, I mean, I think, uh, like maybe we were all booking passage on the same ship or something, or or maybe there was. Uh, whether there was a brawl or something that we all got involved in, I don't know. What, Maybe what you were at a bar. Thinking. Well, we, so Titania, your appointment, your your expectation is your appointment is going to be with this guy about your ship. So maybe you maybe you met at a bar. Maybe you and the captain met at a bar, and you were like, "Oh, I'm I've got a ship, and we're about to go. I'm about to strike out on my own. I don't know." And then you guys got to talking, and now you're you're you know you got a new crew member. I could see it. Yeah, I think. Uh, well, Titania's social roles are uh, surprisingly low, especially compared to uh, Blaze. Um, <laughs> she just she hasn't had that many friends so I think there is this sort of like weird eagerness and she's like a person in her late 30s it's hard to make friends and she's like oh you you like space you like you're going out to well you like go to you go to places me too and she's just kind of like a kind of a weirdo at the bar but uh she's got a ship so I'm sure people want to talk to her but also she doesn't have the ship so she's like it's in the sh I'm a ship's in the in the shop it's in the shop. I have one. It's a nice one. Do you want to hang out? <laughs> you want to hang out? Do you want to hang out? That's how I meet. That's how I try oh to meet God. friends since I'm in my 30s. Oh. <laughs> you want to hang out? I got a ship. Common a interest. <laughs> Grant, how do you think you got, uh, you, you found, did you think you, you sought out Titania or do you think you just ran into her and now you're, you want to like go on an adventure? Did you hear my uh, voice? He heard uh, my voice at the bar and he was like, Titania. Uh, yeah. I did. It's just to be completely transparent, this hit so hard. I'm trying to make new friends outside of the show and everything, and uh, <laughs> I've installed Bumble BFF on my phone at the uh, advice of my of my uh, therapist. And uh, let me tell you, a lot of uh, gentlemen out there don't use it for best friends forever. I can tell you that much. <laughs> I've seen some things that uh, I wasn't signed up for with the BFF portion of Bumble. Uh, but yes, it is There's difficult. There's services for that. You can just use that. There is, a, there is a totally different part of Bumble that doesn't have BFF attached to it where that's welcome. Right. <laughs> anyway. Well, um, really, really hate about so friendship. Uh, I that's think, true. That's true. I think, I think I'm here in my uh, uh, capacity as Butch Cairo. I think I was invited as a part of like kind of a, a summer vacation by whatever low level nobility lives here. Some sort of like 28th in line to the f throne of Faldor or something that has like a pleasure area here. And I was probably in the VIP area and I wasn't interested in anything going on with the people partying behind me. And from above, I looked down on where Titania was talking to Captain Bridger and like was intrigued by them and he's like following them and he's using his um, streetwise and his uh, stealth and everything else he's learned as kind of a journalist to kind of keep an eye because he's not even quite sure who Titania is at this point but he's like 
I remember something and I want to learn more. He's not invited to be with them, but he's going to follow them to like the appointment, I think. <laughs> all right. So uh, the lurker in the back does not join the appointment. But uh, all right, Tanya, do you want your appointment? With, it's, it's time for your appointment with Mr. Anders Kasari. Uh, do you bring the captain with you or do you have to go on your own? It's so funny that it's just like I picture Blaze like we're going through a big, you know, financial looking building with a revolving door and Blaze like sneaks in the revolving door with us. <laughs> and we oh, both no. are like, oh. is this, is, is he following us? I can't, I can't, have you not? Yeah, I think I take you with, I think I'm like, you know, I have to go uh, pick up my ship, but if you'd like to come, uh, it's, it should be a quick appointment. I don't, I don't see why not. And that way, you know, if we want to take off, we could. And if we, need, if you need to get supplies, I, I understand. And, and if, if you're busy, I understand. That, um, I, I'm busy too. I have no, the no, appointment. No. Yeah, no, that's great. So, Butch Cairo. <laughs> Where? Oh God! The man, who was following us. <laughs> Butch Cairo is in the corner with a trench coat pulled up to the edges of his eyes, and he's looking down. Who's who's Butch Cairo? Who's Butch Cairo? Butch, he's only the most famous journalist in the history of the Imperium, evidently. <laughs> huh? I, he's, what, is he, uh, he, what does he write? He broke the story. He broke the big story about the the story he broke, whatever it was, I can't remember. <laughs> he broke that story, that huge story. <laughs> oh, right, right. No, I I, I know who that is. Uh, is he looking at us? Wave. Wave to him. But, Do you want to come over here? But, butch! Um, I'm sorry. Butch. Uh, hello? That's him. He reacted. <laughs> Mr. Cairo, huge fans. Huge fans. Oh. Actually, I was I, thinking... Uh, we, because I think one of the... I don't... I guess maybe we're not doing this, but like I, I know that sort of the default is that uh, assumption with Traveler is that the characters know each other coming in oh, okay. pretty well. Um, yeah, I wanted, I wanted to see how how we were gonna get. Yeah, you can use a connection scale. We never, we you know, we didn't talk a lot about connect the connections rule. We did a little bit. Um, we can always do that more off air. So yeah, maybe you all, maybe you've met Captain Bridger before. Yeah, um, I was some, thinking that maybe uh, either my like the the military engagement I was involved in or the diplomatic effort that I was involved in, maybe you were covering whatever it was and we met that way. Yeah. And through all my sources, uh, that talked about any of your dealings, maybe you were like the one you, you were always a good guy, right? You were always on the yeah. right side. So like out of all the corruption I was dealing with, you were always like a beacon of beacon of like how the system should work when it does work. So I've always looked up to you. Okay, cool. Yeah. And obviously, and, we, you guys know each other, too. Yeah, Titania squints her eyes and she goes, You look so familiar. You what? look, you know, you look like this guy I knew back on, his name is Jude, it's not important. Uh, anyway, uh, clearly you know each other and uh, we were just talking about, uh, well, going off on my ship. I have an appointment to get to, sorry to be rude, but uh, you're welcome to come if you're not busy spying on us. I'm not busy spying on you. I'm busy taking in as much of the universe as I can. It's me, Butch Cairo. <laughs> <laughs> He's a legend, a this man. He's a legend. You're Jude Wolverson. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Jude, it's, it's me, Titania. <sighs> and like all of the pretense <laughs> and false machismo oozes from Butch's face. He goes... Hi, Titania. <laughs> what? What are you going under a pen name? That's uh, that's excellent. Your work is fantastic. I had no idea it was you. It's great to see you. You look great. Thank you, thank you. You look amazing, marvelous. You look. Would you say I look thirty-four? I'd say you'd look exactly <laughs> thirty-four if I had to guess. I got stuck wow. in a wormhole. It's a long story. Anyway, uh, oh. we, did, we both were in high school. We're the same age. It's a funny story. I'll, I'll tell you another time. Uh, I, would you like to come to my appointment with me about my ship? <laughs> I'd love to. There's nothing I'd like more. I'm, I'm absolutely so late now. I, he's going to freak out. Do you, do you out mind on me. though, instead of coming as Jude, if I come as Levi Blaze? Whoa, that's a different name <laughs> yes. than one you just... 
Is that another pen name? <laughs> Levi Blaze has burned down all of the worst politicians, keeping the little man down across this subsector. Watch out, wow. Jack, because Levi Blaze is on the case. <laughs> Wow, it's amazing. You haven't changed at all. It's surprising <laughs> a little. Or not really surprising, I suppose. Oh, my appointment. I'm so yes, late. We, we okay, should go. We on. should go. Levi's right, right behind you. You all rush into the office. It's a little weird, I, yeah, I think, to, even if they're an old friend, to invite someone to run into <laughs> to a business meeting that you're having. Maybe, so maybe you join saying, and you sit out in the lobby. Yeah, it's just like, let's catch up then. on the way. Like, we have to get to this, this appointment, but we'll catch up on the way. I think Titania goes, then, you get supplies for the ship. My appointment's about my ship. You get the supplies, I'll get the ship, and then we'll meet back up. Could you get me a cup of ramen, a cup of noodles? I'm hungry while you're out. Oh, yes, I've always done nothing but bend it to your every whim and need since high school, so. <laughs> Thanks, hey, dude, I Jude, leave. Jude will go get you the cup of noodles. Bye, you meet dude. The most fam- you run into the most famous journalist of the subsect. You're like, can you get me a cup of noodles? And you send them to the bodega. I can't believe. <laughs> yes. All right. And a decorated Let's captain. Getting noodles. A yeah. Decorated right. captain. I'm like, bye. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so eventually you rush into the the office of Mr. Andrews Kasari, uh, and he's like, he's looking at, his, looks at his space watch, and he's like, all right, come in, come in, come in. Um, yes, uh, Miss Wesland, uh, good of you to come. Uh, you, I know we are supposed to speak of your ship, but um, yeah, it's quite embarrassing, really. Close the door, close the door. And uh, he sits you down in his office. I don't like, want any famous journalists listening in. <laughs> <laughs> the fact of the matter is, uh, <laughs> we don't have a ship for you. What? We, we don't have a surplus of ships right now. There's a, it's, it's just a... But I picked mine out in the catalog. I, I picked the baby beluga. I named it. Yes, I, yes. <laughs> I saw the paperwork and yes, I understand. I submitted my paperwork on time. I might be late for my appointment, but that doesn't mean I don't get a ship. No, between you and me, it's not your fault. However- Of course it's not my fault. You just said it was a clerical error. It's your fault. <laughs> well, I, I'm just the middleman here, Miss Wesland. Uh, and he's very over, you can tell he's very overworked. He's well, just like a okay. middle management. S- sorry, Mr. Oh, okay. Anderson. <laughs> Mr. Kasari, but thank you. Um, <laughs> yes. All right, okay, well, <laughs> I don't have a ship for you, but we have a line on a ship. We know where you can get one. I'm listening. One of our detached duty vessels has been stuck on a nearby world and it needs retrieval. And if you could bring it home to Flammarion, I'm sure I could convince the scout service to at least lease it to you on a scout's I- IISS contract. Uh, but depending on what you know negotiations go, perhaps we could be convinced to part with it. Um, it's not much to look at, uh, but you know, it will hold together and should serve you well. You're, I, I know you're an engineer and I'm sure you'll be, have a great fun restoring it. Um, it suffered a major problem with its electronic system and it needs a crew to deliver replacement parts and repair it and bring it back home for a full re- refit. Uh, Mr. Down- Anderson, that's actually perfect. I believe I might have a crew. Do you know Butch Cairo and Captain Aaron Bridger? Uh, yes, of course. Why... Why, why, why do they're, you ask? they're very good friends of mine. Go on. <laughs> Are you saying Butch Cairo is going to be a member of your crew on your... And Butch <laughs> opens the door with a steaming <laughs> cup of hot meals. <laughs> Titania, I, I think you wanted oh, sorry, these. sorry, but not now. Not now. Oh, okay. I'm in my Psst. meeting. Door closes. Is that Butch Cairo? <laughs> it's a Butch Cairo doing a cup of noodles. <laughs> you don't know who you're dealing with. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> the ship itself, if you're interested, is downed on Walston, about four parsecs from here. It's a scout courier, an S001642-C, known as the High and Dry. And you, of course, could rechristen it, you know, however you wish. Uh, it's uh, spent most of her service on communications duty, hence the C designation. 
Uh, it's, it's, you know, not the newest ship in our fleet. It's about 92 years old. And it's been fully rebuilt twice, and it will fly true with a good crew. Uh, and what we need is someone to go out and download and install a new operating system on the ship's computers to ensure that any corruption caused by the failure does not endanger the vessel that will require a full reinstall. And then, of course, when you bring it back home to Flammarion, it will undergo a full repair and upgrade, and we'll give you all the documentation to prove us that it belongs to the IISS, uh, and we'll also provide any necessary equipment, vouchers for refueling on the way back, and uh, naturally passage for a ship bound for Walston. And I should say, I know, lest you get any ideas, the new operating system is temporary and will only work for three months, so if any of your very famous crew decides to make off with it on their own, it will lock down the minute it touches down in port. So, I don't know why that would apply to you. Obviously, we trust trust you, Ms. Wesland, but just, just, just get out there. Uh, what happened to the original crew? Uh, uh, let's just say it didn't work out. Is the ship... Okay, would I know, just knowing the area, is the ship in, like, enemy territory? Is it an area that's like, why are they asking me to go there? Can they just not bring, like, a tow truck spaceship? Um, you can roll... I mean, yeah, you wouldn't... You, roll that same... Roll that, uh, your xenology again. Again, okay. hard to find the right roll that's for this. seven... Okay, yeah, I mean, you know, so with that, you know, you, we could also, I guess, just roll education, maybe, but you would know that uh, this is, Walston is an Imperial client role, in client world, so it receives, excuse me, protection from the Imperial Navy, though it, at present there aren't really any naval forces in the subsector. Um, it's got a sm very small population on it. Uh, it's kind of a backwoods planet. Uh, it's, it does have a starport that actually does get frequented, you know, just on jump paths. You know, it will, you know it's kind of a stopover world. Um, that's really all you know about it. You know, there's nothing really of note about Walston, it's, uh, okay. but you know, you don't know. It's not, you know not in any kind of like conflict zone or anything like that. Okay, um, Mr. Anderson, uh, it, I understand. Kasari, but go on. Right, I understand the terms <laughs> are. She just doesn't care. She just <laughs> right. <laughs> I get the ship. I get the ship. But the thing is, I was already owed in sh a ship by leaving the scout service. So what else are you offering besides a rusty bucket? I suppose for someone with your service record and years of devoted service and reputation, uh, I can offer 1,000 credits for incidental expenses uh, up front. And uh, when you return to Flammarion with the vessel, you, uh, I can promise another 1,000 credits, uh, plus hotel, uh, stay in a hotel. And that goes for, you know, if you if you are indeed crewing up, uh, I can provide that for up to a crew of four. Uh, Excellent. Does that sound suitable? We'll all need separate rooms. I want to make that apparent in the hotel stay. Naturally. <laughs> I just, <laughs> want to make, I just, I just really want that. To, that's my rider. I don't share rooms. I want separate rooms. <laughs> You're shaking this guy. Just middle manager down. Yeah. <laughs> naturally. Uh, the real power right. move, never using his name, too. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, sounds good. Sign on the dotted line, I suppose. Very well. Uh, all right. And he... Uh, he provides you with the necessary paperwork. He provides you with documentation proving that the vessel does belong to the the scout service and that you are representing representing the scout service. Uh, you and the crew. Uh, he has <laughs> Butch as you bring your crew in, and Butch Cairo and Captain Aaron Bridger show up in this guy's office, and he's like just a little starstruck and very confused. <laughs> but you all sign the necessary paperwork, uh, and he gives you uh, he uh, he pulls out his he pulls out his handheld device and he swipes over passage uh, on a, a commercial vessel to Walston. Cool. I spilled a uh, cup of noodles on the contract. <laughs> I'm not going to offer. Sorry, Mr. Anderson. I got to go. I have another Thank appointment. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. We'll Thank never you, forget Anderson. you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, uh, very well. <laughs> um, okay. 
So uh, why don't we? I'm gonna, just to move us along. Let's say you know, you all get to know you get to know each other. You catch up at a bar. You stay the night, and your your ship you are booked on the the Type A2 Far Trader Autumn Gold under Captain Michelle Corelli, uh, which is actually bound for Elizabeth with drop offs at two stops: Planet Five Six Seven Nine Zero Eight and Walston. The whole passage will take about a week. Um, wow. It's a cargo vessel, but uh, it does carry. You know, it will, you know, you have you have staterooms. You won't. You don't have a perhaps a Butch Cairo and the captain have to bunk together. And uh, Titania and uh, Lucille, who is with you, though, will will retcon what exactly happens. Uh, it, you bunk together in the other the other cabin. I call Anderson immediately and just tell I, him that this is absolutely not what I asked for. <laughs> I don't have any control over over commercial vessels, Miss Westland. I hang up and I text him. I, I text message, Mr. An- Mr. Anderson. I'm furious. Mr. Anderson. <laughs> the scouts will be hearing about this. <laughs> <laughs> he's just so aggrieved. <laughs> he's got five kids at home. He just works this job. <laughs> he's riding a desk at the starport of Flammarion. <laughs> right as he, life even more miserable. Right as he's rubbing his temples about Titania bothering him, he sees a tell-all uh, journalist hit, hit piece come out on him on his favorite website. <laughs> <laughs> Which guy wrote? No, it's Levi Scott Blaise. service representative. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> known, known for uh, <laughs> being really cheap. I don't know. Discriminatory um, <laughs> hiring practices. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's just like, oh, God. Um, okay. But yeah, you settle into your berths. You strap in. You ease out of space dock. And you get in position for your first jump. And the stars stretch, and you go faster than light, uh, bound for planet five six seven nine zero eight. Um, while you're, uh, I was like, while you're uh, on route, I was going to have you all <laughs> great, amazing. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was going to have you all roll an education check to see what you what anybody else knows about Walston. Maybe you, you I can actually, also... I do know about Walston. Oh, do you? Because I think it featured in the Traveler Adventure. Um, that which was the big sort of the AP for Traveler back in the day, uh, I think. But I know it's like it's mostly Varga, right? There is a small Varga population. Yeah, there is a small there's a Varga population, uh, and there's a human population as well. And you would know uh, maybe Captain Bridger with your immense education score. Uh, well, give me a roll. Let's see what you roll. Yeah, um, uh, thirteen. Okay. Yeah, you know that there is a the there's a, a human minority that basically serves as a as a ruling class and a var a, a larger Varga population that's they're not oppressed necessarily like the imperial na- the, the the imperium has done investigations into this and they've decided it doesn't meet uh, their criteria for like they have to get involved mm-hmm. but the Varga are definitely second class citizens on right, Boston right, right. and it's cold right yes it's cold yeah. it's a it's a. I'll give you. I'll give you some info. Why don't I give okay. you some info? Um, it's. Uh, it's the only. If you, I'll, I'll refer you to roll twenty. I can show you where it is in the subsector. It's down here. Um, you'll see it. Uh, and I can. I'll jump you also over to the Walston map. So, it's the only uninhabited body in the system. It's not exactly inviting. It's dry and arid, and temperatures are fairly moderate during the day, but at night they plummet below freezing. Uh, it has a total population of about 3,000, uh, and as you po- you, uh, you pointed out, Skid, uh, 90% are Varger, uh, and the ruling elite of the world are humans, and you know the form of government is a hereditary dictatorship, uh, and the humans on, on Walston claim to uh, trace their ancestry back to the early settlement during the rule of man, though that claim is uh, highly disputable. Yeah. This, whole, this whole region of space is mostly the human population is mostly Terran, most Soleimani. Yeah. Uh, just like during the, the exodus, like during the dark ages after the fall of, uh, of the second Imperium, the Terran Imperium, this was the, a lot of them ended up here. Yeah. So if you look at the map, mo- there's a, you see Walston, Maine is the main continent on the planet. And then you'll see Settlement Island. That's where almost the entire population lives. Uh, it has three major towns, about 600 people each, plus a scattering of small hamlets. Um, the capital is called Central Lake. Uh, everyone who work it's a population of 300. Everyone who lives there basically finds their work uh, in connection to the government. 
Um, there's a starport that's fairly small, but ships pass through fairly regularly. Like I said, it's a stopover world. And what you would know with that high role is also that, given the right circumstances, Walston might become an economic center of the arm uh, when the region actually joins the Imperium. But at present, uh, the, the, you know that the dictator named Masterson has Masterton has been involved in negotiations with maybe one day bringing in one or more Imperial mining corporations to license installations on the planet. But they, those negotiations have been stalled for so long. Uh, there are thoughts that the companies might actually just choose to move in and just uh, you know get tied up in court and decide it's going to be more profitable to do that than wait for actual you know actual approval. Um, yeah, that's you know. So you know, you know a fair amount. That's why I'm here. That's actually why I'm here. I'm covering okay. this dictator and what's going on with these mining companies and will they, won't they take over Walston? And this is the perfect cover for me to go in, uh, unnoticed and unassumingly. Oh, yeah, so this he, is just a really awesome coincidence. Totally. Yeah. Because <laughs> or maybe maybe you're like I've been I'm looking for my next story and like you hear you're on a Walston and you're like great. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. You also, I will say, like the con, the the way the human population treats the Varger population. Again, like the Imperium investigated, but most Imperial Imperial citizens would find it objectionable. Um, right. Mm. Anyway, all right. So yeah, you make your first jump. You hit, you you may eventually make orbit at uh, five six seven nine oh eight. It's an uninhabited planet. About two dozen down there. Mostly scout service. Uh, you know, you drop supplies, refuel, and then in the next day, you 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 take off, make your next jump, and there, you know, once you complete the jump out the view panels, you see a planet about half water, half land mass. The autumn gold fires its engine, hurtling towards the planet, <laughs> and then as it approaches, the engines cut, the thrusters fire, and you achieve orbit around Walston, and then. The captain advises everyone to strap in, and then you make you make entry, uh, and you land in Walston Star Town. Nice. Um, okay, so here I'll, I'll I'll direct you once more to roll twenty, and I'll throw up a map of the starport. Um, as you can see, it's not very large, uh, not a lot going on, but uh, you know, you uh, you enter the town. Uh, you have to pass through customs to do so, which means that um, oh, I gotta drop you guys there. Sorry. Mm-hmm. All right, there you are. You yeah. should be able to see. Oh, it there now. we go. Okay. Cool. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. So to enter the town, you have to pass through customs. So any firearms, laser weapons, or blades longer than a dagger would have to be placed in the storage for a low, low fee of ten credits per week. Um, but yeah, the customs official meets you there. Um, what do you want to do? Do I have to put my grenades in it too? Uh, yes. Yes, you do. <laughs> do I also have to put my stunner in? It's not technically a lethal weapon. Uh, uh, no, that, yes, you have to, yes, you have to put your stunner in. This Are is, you we sure? Have a, we have a moderately high law level, law level four on this world, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Miss Wesland. I drop the stunner and I say, you can bill to a Mr. Anderson. Uh, <laughs> did, you say, did you say Miss Wesland? Still. Oh, interesting. I'm just going to write that down right here. Jude, you don't have to write that. We could just talk about information between us. You don't have to write it down. This is how I learned it in journalism school, which I flunked out of. I heard. I've uh, I'm sorry about that. Anyway, okay, here's my stunner. Thank you. Um, he doesn't seem to recognize either of you, by the way. He just, like, you just spoke to him. I discovered a world. I don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to talk to him a, at all? Or? Yeah, can ahead, I use a, my advocate skill to uh, try to use a legal argument to for us to keep our sidearms? Ooh. Uh, yeah, go ahead and then make the argument. Because <laughs> under the terms of the Imperial Convention of 1137, any uh, former Imperial officers are permitted to carry the uh, the sidearms uh, on any... Uh, oh my god, uh, two sixes. Uh, that's a 15. <laughs> I was going to call this a formidable role, which is 14 plus. <laughs> <laughs> and he, you, yeah, you make such a compelling legal argument that yes, you are allowed to keep your sidearm. Just yes. you. Just you. Oh, okay. I take, the, my st- I take my stunner back. <laughs> m- m- miss... Wetland, was it? 
<laughs> uh huh. Stun her back in, please. <laughs> I'm part of the scout service. <laughs> that wasn't included in his argument. That's unfortunately, the that's only a it's a naval naval officers only. It was a na- you, naval officers only. Hmm? Are you all going to be troublemakers? What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> My name is <laughs> Derek Walby. Derek Walby. I know Derek you from Walby. high school. I put my stunner bag. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, he, so you pay your credits and he, you pass through customs and you make your way onto the town. What do you want to do? Uh, wow. Oh, so we've been. Was this a single jump? Two jump, double jump. Oh, so we've been in space for two weeks. Uh, about a week total. Oh, it it's, was a. Oh, but it was it was one jump, but it was a, a jump two. It's jump two, yes. Okay. Um, so I should also say, you guys know that the pl- you know that the the ship is somewhere on planet, but you don't know where it is. All they all they know is it's some it's been abandoned somewhere on planet. Um, oh, actually, I will ask Derek. Um, Titania spins back around and um, she says, uh, "Sorry to be a bother before we were in, you know, doing jumps, and it's been a while since I've been on a new planet." Uh, do you know where I could find uh, a junkyard or uh, possibly an old port? I'm looking for a ship. I have to recover it for the scout service, and I show him the paperwork. Uh, roll a diplomat. Ooh. Uh, shoot, mm. do I have that? I don't think I do. You can roll any skill. You don't have it a minus three. But minus think, three. Did you get diplomat as part of your skills package? I think we got uh, deception. Deception. Got deception and persuade. I have you diplomat. Can roll, oh, I mean, you can roll Diplomat or Persuade. If you want to roll Persuade, you can roll Persuade. Um, okay, I'll just roll Persuade. And if it goes wrong, oh well. Let's see. Sorry, my cat. <laughs> <laughs> you always oh, tra- you, n- you never travel without your cat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my cat is in my paperwork file. Uh, that, cat have I, all its, that cat have all its shots? <laughs> uh, that's going to be a three. The cat got in the way. Oh, three. no. Oh, no. Wait, you should. Do you roll snake eyes? <laughs> Wait, no. A uh, three. What do I plus? Plus plus one plus. Uh, and this is going to be what? social. Social. Oh, social. Okay, so a four. Okay. Uh, does anyone else want to roll? <laughs> uh, I turn to Aaron. I turn to Captain Aaron Bridgers. I go. I uh, he has more information than I do. Actually, I'm sifting through my papers. Well, I think this is this is a custom-made scenario for Butch here because with, oh, this, yeah. with the social. Oh, uh, true. This is a persuade, yes? Yeah, or, or diplomat. Yeah. Or diplomat. I think I'm going to stick with persuade, even though I should be a diplomat with my social score of 17. It's going to be a plus two, and I have a one rank in there, so I had a plus three total to this roll. Yes. Well, social is plus three, at least. Wait, right? your social is high enough to be plus three, yeah. Oh, it is? Oh, great. Yeah. Plus four oh, yeah. to this roll. Holy shit. You have hi- a higher social than I have a chart for. It's <laughs> <laughs> off the charts. It's off the charts. <laughs> Levi Blaze rolled a 12. Okay. Um, oh, he's lo- so he's looking at what does Levi Blaze do to, uh, to uh, help jog his memory? I don't think you heard the beautiful young woman over here. <laughs> She's wondering where a junkyard is, where we might be able to find a decommissioned, rusted junk like the high and dry. You have any idea? Um, well, he looks between your very persuasive, weird macking on Titania and <laughs> <laughs> and the records of the ship you show him, like the documentation. He, he's like, oh, I remember this, this ship, oh. Those guys were troublemakers. You know, I don't know where the ship is. I, I think they, ah, they check, maybe check at the Port Authority office. Mm. Mm. I think they were doing some work, work, some work for the planet. I can't remember, but they were, because you're not going to be like them, are you? Well, what did they do? What kind of trouble did they cause? Are you going to hold up the line all day? No, I want to know. I, he's like you. Look, you turn back. There's one other person behind you. <laughs> <laughs> I got. I got. Step forward, please. Yeah, move along. All right. Welcome to Walston. 
Um, uh, okay, so you uh, you walk out into the Star Town. Uh, it's big enough, if you can see on the map here, uh, big enough that it would be considered a village on most other worlds. There's a couple of decent enough hotels and a more modest hostel if you're uh, trying to to save credits. In a restaurant or two, some shops selling both local and off-world goods. Uh, you basically can walk from one end of the town to the other in a few minutes. <laughs> Uh, the one interesting thing is most buildings are actually underground with just the top entry floor above oh, ground. Oh, cool. like Minneapolis. Yeah, and even that's like kind of half sunken into the ground and accessible via small ramp or steps. You, uh, and buildings are usually connected in complexes, also like Minneapolis, uh, rather than standing alone. Is this because it's very cold here? You said it gets very cold. Yeah. Yeah. Is it snow covered? Oh, no, no, it's arid. No okay. Snow. Yeah. You can also know, like, there's a lot of desert, like, kind of... Yeah. They were like, I don't know, like, step, I guess? It, I don't know. I don't know yeah. geology. Yeah, steps. Yeah. Good. But it looks like is this... There... Oh, go ahead, Skid. Uh, is there a Traveler's Aid Society? <laughs> Here. Uh, roll... I, think it has, I think it's like a... Yeah, what's... Is it Starport C plus or something? Yeah. B what's... plus? Hold on, let me look up the Aid Society. I don't think so. I Are think you is, did you get did you get I a am, membership? I did get a membership uh, for mustering out. I got we'll a, talk I got about the Traveler's membership. Aid Society while I look this up. So yeah, the Traveler's Aid Society is sort of like AAA slash uh, platinum status for an airline and, or uh, hotels. You can get it gives you all sorts of on planet systems that have the the service. You get like free lodging. You get like uh, you know food, board, like for life. Uh, it's one of the sweetest like benefits you can get from mustering out from one of the services. It's super expensive if you have to pay for it on your own, but uh, I think it's like a mega credit. I think it's like a million credits to buy your own membership or something. But it's uh, it's it's really really useful and cool. Right on the character it's, sheet is cash on hand, monthly ship payments, and living costs. So being able to save with something like that is enormous within the mechanics of the game. Yeah. It is all class A and B starports, which I do not believe this is. No. Wait, Skid, do you have right? do you have that? I do. Oh shoot! <laughs> Dang. Yeah, all class A and B starports, and I do not think. Yeah, this is not a class A or B starport. It's much too small for that. Yeah, I, uh, I doubt. Oh it. yeah. Okay. It just, is a class a class C, class C starport. I just found right. it right here. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So no travelers aid society. Uh, what do you want to do? Where do you want to go? Um, I mean, he suggested the port authority, which seems like the most obvious place, but also we could go to like the commercial road area and kind of scope stuff out before we go to the authorities, just in case it's not on the up and up. Oh, so they don't alert their like their henchmen to like hide it once we start asking for it. I like it. Mm. Scope out the garages. Well, yeah. I didn't like Derek's tone about how they like were troublemakers. <laughs> and I'm thinking like, okay, what did they like impound the ship and it's going to be a difficult thing to get to. So I want to, I want to see if anybody knows anything. Maybe do, yeah, or did you mention a streetwise check? Maybe do a yeah. streetwise check to see. You can do streetwise. You could do, if you wanted to like hit the bars, you could do carouse. Uh, oh. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Streetwise is also modified by social, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, why don't we head over to the commercial road? Because I don't think streetwise is going to work right by the starport customs. Like, we got to get yeah, yeah, in yeah. with the street urchins and then... <laughs> Basically, everything is right by each other. That's how small this yeah, place is. It's a very small. <laughs> Just small roll problem. me a streetwise, Grant. All right, here it comes. That is going to be a 13 streetwise. Okay, yeah. So, basically, everyone in town, uh, they didn't spend a lot of time here. Uh, but they did like they they hit a couple bars. Everyone hates these guys. They basically just made some trouble. Were really loud and obnoxious, and then uh, you know they see they 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 went on their way to Central Lake, uh, and then no one knows what happened after that. So they suggest you check in with the Port Authority office. Wait, Central Lake. Central Lake is the capital of Walston. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's make our way to Port Authority. Okay. All right. Welcome to the the Walston Port Authority. How can I help you? Do you have you any public, a, a, public restrooms? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a refresher right there. 
You're welcome to use it, though. I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, just just wonder. I figured that would be the case. It's so familiar to something I know from my home planet. <laughs> there are plans of rebuilding the bus depot, but uh, it's I don't never think gonna happen. It's, it's never, never gonna, gonna happen. happen. You see, we're kind of on the border between two states, even though it's a very small area. But you know, you know and then they can't they can't agree, and this go- this governor doesn't like this governor, and then they put different people on the committee, and it's all yeah. Anyway, what can I do for you? Oh, uh, we have some uh, paperwork. We're here to retrieve a defunct ship for the scout service. Uh, my name uh, is. I don't know if I should tell... I'll tell him really. Titania Westland, and I show her the paperwork. All right, let me review this. And she takes 20 minutes to read through the paperwork, line by line. She's very <laughs> thorough. <laughs> She's like, all right, this all checks out. Uh, let me pull them up in the system. She's an ancient, an ancient computer, like computer terminal. And she looks... She's... All right. Okay. Yeah, here they are, high and dry. Well, I remember these fellows. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. They were chartered by the world government for a mission. It seems I'm not authorized to release any more information, so don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> you got to talk to the government office at Central Lake. Central Lake. Uh, how how might we get to Central Lake? Do I look like the Department of Transportation? Yes. All right. Under the terms of the (laughs) Sword World's Confederation Articles, Section 148, any uh, Port Authority uh, employee is required to give any and all helpful information to any recently retired naval officer within the last two years. Roll advocate. advocate. (laughs) Uh, That is a 10. (laughs) You just made that up on the spot. (laughs) Damn. Listen, all right, I'll tell you. There's a train. <laughs> there's a train. It, we're, you, there's not a lot of things on this world. Huh? You, like you go from the one place to the other, and you go back again. There's a train. Go to the train station. You take a. You just take a ride. Right. Thank you. And we would appreciate it if you would pay for our tickets. Why? <laughs> just we really appreciate it. Well, <laughs> I'd really appreciate a foot rub. All right, fair enough. <laughs> but, but, Pop but them up here, don't have to. Put them up on the <laughs> shelf. No, don't I've got to. lotion. Be quiet, Titania. <laughs> <laughs> we each take a foot. Put it up. Each take a foot. Some things never change. <laughs> oh, uh, all right. Okay. Well, my husband. Do, uh, he do, never do, does do, this for me. <laughs> do you, while, while you're getting your uh, wonderful foot rub, do you do you want to tell us any more information that you said you wouldn't want to talk about before? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Seeing as you're on official official duty and all, you know, uh, uh, yeah, right there on the arch. Oh, uh, these corns—they yeah. must give you a lot of problems. Oh, you got no idea. We live on a desert. It's not great for the feet. Um. All right. I will. The the world government will pay for your accommodations and your rail service tickets. Since you're dim- not because you gave me the foot rub, but because you're here on official business, mind you. Mm-hmm. But thank you for it was the foot completely rub. unnecessary. Well, no, I appreciate it. You said you said you would appreciate one thing. I said I appreciate. I thought the implication was, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So yes, yeah, so you find your way to the. They, she offers you comp tickets on the rail service and vouchers for a hotel in Central Lake. Uh, you're able to find the rail station pretty easily. You can see it. It's up, you know, up to the north here. Uh, and there's a regular rail service. It runs once a day, but you're able to catch the, the train to Central Lake. I go immediately uh, I will... into the restroom, the refresher, and wash the hell out of my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Scrub them. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. And then you arrive at Central Lake. So Central Lake is an even smaller town than the Starport. It sits on the large, centrally located lake on Settlement Island. There's not much going on here at all. There's a residential area, commercial area, industrial zone, and of course, the uh, kind of grandly named Dictator's Palace that also also serves as the government center. Uh, Again, most of the buildings are primarily underground. Uh, I'm going to assume you go straight to the government building, and you walk into a reception area decorated in what? 
you all think uh, probably looks like what would be the local idea of tasteful and businesslike. <laughs> <laughs> Pastel blues, Backwater. mid grays, but the reception desk is uh, empty. Uh, but eventually, if you ring the bell enough times, this uh, harried, balding man emerges and he introduces himself as, Hello, I'm Alan Greener, Minister for Off-World Affairs, Public Relations, and Fisheries. It's lovely to meet you, uh, Butch Cairo. I'm uh, in town. Thought I might write a lovely bit of a travel article about your planet here. Oh, that's nice. Oh, um, I'll hook you up with our public relations office after uh, we're done. Is that why you're here? Well, we have uh, several goals for our journey here. Uh, Titania, why don't you show them the papers? Yes, Mr. What did you say your name was? Greener. Alan Green. It's Minister Greener. Thank you very Minis- much. Minister Allen. Uh, I have paperwork here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, My so name is Tanya Wesley. I'm the fifth Wesley. ranking official on this, bo- on this world. <laughs> Congratulations. I'm a fourth ranking senior scout. Uh, and I'm here about a ship. My name is Titania Wesland, and as you can see, I have all the proper paperwork. I was sent over from a lovely woman at the Port Authority uh, d- terminal. I forget what it's called. <laughs> B- building? Office? Office? Uh, and he takes your paperwork, and he inspects it, and you can see like this very, he just sighs. He's like, yeah, I I know where the high and dry is, all right. I'll... Listen, I'll agree to share the location of the ship and help get you access on one condition. If you agree to complete the mission your friends at the scout service were supposed to complete, that I paid them to complete, yeah, I have a few questions myself before I answer that. What happened to the other scouts? I was told they came here and then no one heard from them again. They don't seem to have been very popular. The boot. We, listen, there's a volcano out on Settlement Island called Mount Salbari. It's, uh, we believe it to be extinct. It's been extinct for millennia. But between you and me, it's recently rumbled and caused the occasional very small, very minor tremor. And this... Imperial geologist who passed through a year ago concluded it was 99% certain that it was just a twitch, but you know, we at the government, despite what you might think of us, we, uh, we're pretty thorough and we want a more complete data set. So when your friends at the scout service arrived, I knew their ship was you know, equipped with the right technology to make that survey, and I hired them. I paid them a fair wage, more than, to, uh, to go to the volcano and do some rudimentary survey work and then all i don't know what happened all of a sudden we saw them in their life raft uh they're they're and they just showed up and then they disappeared off world they booked passage and, and left and never spe- spoke to anyone just took the money and ran without their ship they abandoned their ship don't you think that's a bit odd yes i think it's incredibly odd i sent a message to the scout service but they haven't replied you know communication being what it is we don't have subspace transistors in this universe. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Ah, you're right. Yes, I forgot, and it's good you mentioned it out loud. We all were always uh, saying this. Yeah. Just drop that exposition in. That's what I do. We have to remind each other from time to time. Right. Remember, like, remember how we have phones? Yes. (laughs) And we can call and we, we say call and we say text and that's how we talk about it. How did these gentlemen, if they were gentlemen, comport themselves when they were here. In a word, poorly. They got into fights. You were a peaceful world. They got the, they, they, they got the, they got caused, all, they roused all sorts of rabble at the local bars and hotels and trashed their hotel rooms and they got into scuffles with the, the vargers and it was a whole, it was a whole thing. Uh, I hope you comport yourselves better than they did. Uh, my good man, I think you're dealing with a uh, higher class of person. I can, I can almost guarantee. Well, I can uh, now. I can understand some of the 
the attitude that we've gotten from some of the uh, uh, people that we've uh, talked to so far. <laughs> <laughs> the, music is great. the horns behind you making you so powerful when you talk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Never right, seen an attorney the, operate like this. Yeah. <laughs> here's my offer, and it's last and final. I'll share you. I'll, I'll, I'll share the ship's location with you and provide you access, or I'll cover your access. It will take some getting there, and you can use. I'll provide planetary survey equipment and. Several seismic charges, which should be already be aboard the ship, to carry out a, carry out a geological seismic tectonic survey on a region not far from the capital. It'll only take two to three days, uh, and uh, yes, and I'll pay you three thousand credits to, to to take care of this task for me. Cha ching. Uh, a That's question. Last and final. Understood. How much did you pay the original scouts? I, uh, that's uh, that's a that's a rather impertinent question, I should say, Miss. Could Wesson. I see the paper? Could I see the paperwork from their uh, original no, agreement? Uh, oh, all contracts on Wes on 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 Malston are sealed. Oh well, I'll have to I'll have to compare their findings to what we find. I'm assuming that they also agreed to survey the location. Why won't you show me the paperwork, Minister Allen? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I don't have any more money. I'm already going over budget on this. The dictator is very upset. You're just... I, I, I saw his palace on my way over. I'm sure he's thrown a fit inside it. I, I don't like your tone, but uh, <laughs> yes, he did, in fact, throw, I'm told, throw a, a, a very respectful, of course, Miss, you know, dictator uh, Masterton would never throw a fit, but he was very upset. And uh, uh, yes, so I... Three thousand is the best I can do. I, I'll give. I'll. I'll pay for you. I'll cover your rail service to mount to the location of the. He almost. I almost slipped there and told you. Uh, uh, I'll cover your location. Your, your rail service to the to the ship. You're so flustered. I love when they cover our rail service. Uh, <laughs> it's like a two credit ticket. <laughs> it's like a, I'll give you a swipe on your. Fucking uh, walk there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I also he, he literally just walks you down to the station and swipes, swipes a metro <laughs> card for you. <laughs> he pushes open the door. He doesn't even pay yeah. for it. He's like, quick, quick. Yeah. <laughs> just, oh, hop just hop to yeah. Just hop to turnstile. I'll, I'll cover for you. Um, I want to make sure. I know the ship was in uh, not wonderful standing. I want to make sure we can leave with it in good standing. So, will you cover any repairs needed? That's. That's neither. That's not my not my purview. I should. I understand because I'm also played by the the referee that your repairs are going to be your the repair fees are going to be covered by the scout service. So I don't, I don't wanted, worry about that. No, I know that. I just wanted to maybe make you pay for it up front, and then I could pocket the money. It's fine. Uh, all right. Yeah. Are you good with that, Blaze, Captain? I just think we should have led with the foot massage, but uh, I'm okay with these terms. It did seem to work. Last time, we didn't get any actual benefits from it, but mm. yeah. you did like it. You loved it. Well, um, my foot is more than it? fair. I think this seems more than fair. All right. All right. Uh, he so you sign the necessary paperwork, and uh, you find he tells you that the, the high and dry is located at the top of the volcano. What the? F <laughs> and you're the, gonna have the, to the not too rumbly. Don't worry about a volcano. That's the one. Oh boy. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I just to move us along a little bit. Obviously, you know, you probably can spend the night at the hotel. You know, the, obviously they cover it, and then the next day you get on the train. He uh, he swipe. He ha he he like puts the turnstile. Uh, he yeah, he lowers the turnstile for you, and you can just hop it <laughs> to get on the train. Uh, and I will direct you to uh, a map of Mount Salbari and the surrounding area. Oh, oh cool. Oh, that's awesome. Ooh. Uh, so how far is this from where we are now, you know? It's, I mean, it's really not far. <laughs> it's, okay. you're, it's, you'll be there in, a, you know, an hour, <laughs> in a couple, okay. Okay. Maybe, maybe like two hours. Uh, so it's on the cool. other end of the island, but yeah, you'll see that there's the town of Salbari, which is one of the one, you know one of the towns that has about 600 people living there, uh, and then there's a, set, a village, a settlement called Barvin that's closest. The rail service will take you there, and then you can make you're gonna have to trek up, um, 
up to up to the volcano. The highest peak, it's the highest peak on the island. It's, you know, the, the minister will tell you this about 1500 meters above sea level. It's a considerable, oh. but definitely achievable climb. You don't need any special equipment. Um, and though you are hauling, I, I did forget to mention this, you're hauling four containers of equipment uh, for repairs of the ship that you brought with you, like the software panels, all the, uh, the software reinstall, all of that. Right. Um, oh. So uh, you can, he also, you, he links you up with a, with a, a citizen named, uh, uh, you know, uh, Bev, who, uh, it's she, Bev, uh, she's a Varger, uh, but she, uh, she's a driver. You meet her at Barvin and she's, uh, she has an off-road vehicle uh, and she can take you up as far as that will take you. Um, so yeah, so you, I'm assuming you get in the vehicle. Uh, she, uh, she drives you up uh, basically the first 500 meters, but that's as far as the vehicle can travel. After that, uh, you're gonna you're gonna have to go on foot. Is she coming with us? Oh oh, oh no 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 no! I uh, know I I I have another job. I'm also the uh, I also work as a grocery store checkout clerk. And, oh. Uh, oh. I have to get back. Would My you do it starts. for a treat? <laughs> who's a good girl? Who's a good girl? Oh, who's a pretty girl? Oh. I live on a I live in a world that's known for its racism towards my people, <laughs> and that was the most racist thing I've heard all day. Good day. Uh, <laughs> Bev, Bev. Oh, <laughs> she flies it and no, drives away. I love Varga. I'm a Varga person. No, come back, Captain. That was really <laughs> something. I love Varga. Yeah. She's so pretty. I th- well, I'm pretty cool. All right. Er- Judy, well, you must eat a lot of eggs and uh, olive oil. <laughs> oh, she's gone. She's gone. Well, yeah, she's... um, all right. I guess we have to climb this, uh, this mountain. Okay. And here we get into a climb mechanic. So you, the first five, you're, you're basically at 500 meters above sea level right now. The next 300 meters are not as bad as you feared. Uh, there's fairly steep slope, but it's walkable. And there's a snaking path around, uh, boulders and, uh, your slopes, you're following ridges the air thins, but not so bad. And basically you can travel about 100 meters in elevation an hour. Uh, but then when you hit about 800 meters, you start to struggle a bit. So, you know, you hit this large volcanic outcropping. The road is steep. You can only probably cover about 50 meters an hour, but you have a choice. You can follow a long looping ridge around the outcropping, uh, which will take you 1D hours extra. Uh, or you can climb straight up a 10 meter sheer rock face, which will save hours, but require a, an athletics check. Oh, man. I feel like I think we should preserve, conserve as much daylight as we can. I would like to try climbing the rock face. Okay, uh, it is a routine. Excuse me, a routine athletics check. Um, does any? If you, I'm assuming some of you have rope. So if one of you is able to get up and establish a rope, like tie off a rope, then it's an easy check for the rest of you. Uh, I yeah. have no athletics. Uh, I do. I have athletics zero. I think. Okay. So the, uh, the oldest, the old, the lawyer <laughs> is going <laughs> to try to scale this outcropping. It's all right. I do. I used to do a lot of rock climbing uh, just for exercise in between fencing tournaments. <laughs> um, so let yeah, I can. I can. Let me give it a shot. Um, all right. So this is just an unmodified roll, I believe. So you have no. You have no uh, strength modifier. I don't. Uh, okay. That's a five. Uh, okay, that is a fail, actually. Oh, oh. no. Uh, so, oh, you take 3D damage from the fall. <gasps> oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, my God, that's so bad. Okay, I rolled I rolled very poorly. Oh, okay. Uh, I rolled, You take four damage. Okay, so my so endurance is down to endurance two. endurance down, yeah. Oh, shit. Holy moly. Oh, oh my God. Do you want to try again? <laughs> I can't. I, like... Um, I probably I feel broke like, some ribs. Yeah, I feel like Titania watched that and was like, oh, oh, my, all right. Um, Are you okay? Oh, I'm in a lot of pain, but uh, uh, you go. It's I'm not, not doing that. It lo- It's safer than it looks, I think. Um, Just, I made one mistake, which was plummeting from quite a distance up. That I was, was gonna say one. if you didn't if you didn't fall, it wouldn't have happened. If I had done that, I'd be I'd be totally fine. Just avoid um, that one rookie error. 
I guess I could, Tatani can try. I have a plus one to strength, but I have zero. I have nothing in um, athletics, so it would be a minus three. So a minus two. Um, yeah, minus two. But you only have to hit a six. All right, let's. Uh, I'll give it a shot. I think she kind of like in rock climbing when you watch someone else take a pass, you like see what they do, and you're like, I see what he did. I see what Captain did wrong. I'm gonna try something different. Ah. Oh. Uh, oh, fuck, wait. <laughs> oh, no. I got, I got a seven minus two. Oh, no. It's oh, a no. Okay, you also take four, four damage, so your endurance goes down four. No! <laughs> Maybe it's best if you take the long way. No, no, yeah. no. I've learned a lot of things on assignment, and it's time for <laughs> Levi Blaze to really show that he's a true <laughs> jack of all trades. Oh, Levi... Yeah. Don't. <laughs> what is this? Is this climb or athletics? Athletics. Routine athletics. Okay, routine athletics. So it would be your strength modifier plus, uh, well, you have jack of all trades, what? One? One. So strength modifier minus two. To oh, no. Un untrained. Yeah. Okay. Minus two. My strength is plus zero. Okay. Nine on the dice. Okay, oh. you get it. So... Levi Jude is able to scale the wall and establish a rope. And I'm just going to say with e your, you, you, you can make easy checks. You get up, you get up the rope and you, uh, okay. Oh, when you get there though, however, you discover the bones of two humanoids. <gasps> Any of you Ooh. have a medic? Yes. Yeah. Roll medic. We all do. I will. Should we all, should we all yeah. roll or one? Sure. No, let's, just, let's just all roll. It's intellect, right? Uh, uh yes. Education. Oh, education, education. education. Five. Seven. Eleven. Oh. Okay. Great. Uh, uh, well, twelve Levi, plus the, plus the, if that matters, but. Butch, uh, you are able, these, the, these guys were clearly climbers, uh, but they fell, I mean, easily 50 years ago. Oh, wow. So, so they've been here for a long time and no one's found them. Maybe I could so tell it's not by like the brand of what they're wearing or the, the yeah. suit or whatever that's still around the tag of a defunct clothing his company. Gear, his, yeah, he knows his brand mm -hmm. names. Mm -hmm. These wouldn't be part of the scouts though from the original crew. No, 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 no. no. The okay. tag says American Apparel on it. <gasps> oh. oh. <laughs> Yikes, they All don't right. know. Yikes. Oh. Um, okay, well, so for the next 200 meters, uh, it's actually going is a lot easier so you you can make better time. However... You start to notice the air is thinner. Oh. I'm going to roll over your medic checks. You all know you need to pace yourselves down or you're, to avoid altitude sickness. Okay. Wait, but question. Titania just puts her hood up for her vac suit, uh, highest vac suit she has, which fits like ordinary clothing and is very comfortable, but it's a vac suit. Okay, I mean, you could do that. You have to, that means you have to stay in the vac suit to, the whole time. You can also just walk a little more slowly and you avoid the altitude sickness. Up to you, though. Um, also, before we move on, I do have a tech level 14 medikit. So I would like to try to do some first aid on myself and Titania. Okay, great. Um, all right, so I'll do Titania first. Uh, that is 13. So that is, that's equivalent to a very difficult check. I'm just looking at first aid. It's, uh, I think the, the points are equal for first aid or you heal oh, yeah. attribute points equal to twice the effect. Yeah, I have that. I have a whole section on it. We just haven't gotten to it yet. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> Who thought we would be so Restores a number of characteristic so points to, uh, to the effect of a medic check. Must be initiated within one minute of the injury, though. Um, and with the medikit, it's double. Yeah. Okay, great. No, no, no. I, I think. Oh, maybe I'm looking at uh, the other one of the other rule systems. One of the other eight rule systems. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, so what did you roll? Uh, oh. I, I rolled a thirteen. Oh, okay. So yeah, you you basically you get all your points back to Titania. Okay. You, Titania. You're able to, to splint her arm and maybe give her. a some sort of like inject injection that helps you know you didn't you didn't break anything it's just kind of badly bruised and okay and then roll and for yourself myself uh 12 okay you're great yeah so you're back up to awesome full. cool okay Whew. um so what do you want to do about this uh thinning air you can roll now so I'll, t I'll give you your option you can push forward 
or you can slow down. If you push forward, you're going to have an easy endurance check to, you know, to, and if you fail, you'll take a penalty uh, because of the altitude sickness. But it's an easy endurance check. It's an easy endurance check. Oh, I'm, uh, I have high endurance. Oh. Go ahead and roll. Just have to hit four or higher. Okay. Do we all want to do that, though? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. 11. You nailed it. Five. <laughs> Barely, but got it. Great. Four. Does four still pass or do I do? Yes, four passes. Okay. It's four okay. plus. All right, you all this. pass. Okay, uh, that's great. Uh, and then the next 200 meters or so are steep and rocky with little vegetation. You see fields of hardened lava, but there's still a very, fairly direct route. You know, you can make a pretty good pace. And then you get to like the 1200 meter mark if you're, you know, you've, if someone's got some sort of altimeter. Uh, and this is really rather steep and you have no alternative but to climb a sheer rock face so again i need an athletics check oh no oh no you, again, i'm switching you, dice you can send someone up to uh to establish a rope okay i'm gonna try i also need a routine endurance check for the altitude sickness oh boy jeez all right which first what do you want first do the altitude sickness first okay yeah. uh nine for the sickness you're great uh, eight for the climb. Got it. Oh. All right. So this time, Captain Bridger is able to scramble up. He gets the rope up. I'm not going to make you roll your easy checks. Um, okay. Uh, all right. The next, the next kind of altitude band. You're able. You don't need a climb check, but I do need an average endurance check for altitude sickness. Okay. Come on. If you do want to put your vac suit on to tell you, you can. But remember, that's a limited resource. Mm, Six. Okay. It's a Two. fail. Oh, that's a eight, fail. Eight. That passes. Okay, oh. so, uh, so Butch and the captain are. Uh, you suffer from uh, minor altitude sickness. You take a dice modifier minus two on all rolls, even mental. What? Whoa! Whoa. Wow! Well, that's yeah. awful. What? Okay. Um. <laughs> okay. All right, and then all you right. get to the last. What looks like the last kind of, you know, fifty meters are really steep, but there's not that much. You're really close. I need an average endurance check. Oh, wait, we just did this. This is the band we just got. Okay. So you're able, you're, let me take that back. Uh, you get, you, you're you able to, so even though you're suffering from altitude sickness, you're able to get up to the, the lip of the crater and you kind of pull yourselves up and you see the crater there is a good one to two kilometers across. You have an outer zone sloping steeply down to good a good 200 meters. There's a fair amount of vegetation, a scrubby bush, brush forest, small lake at the center, about 500 meters in diameter. And everybody give me a recon roll. Ooh. Oh my God. Mm. What modifies recon? Uh, intellect, I think. Yeah. So just a minus... Oh, no. Uh, oh, minus two. Plus so. two for me. Um, that's a five. Uh, I think I also got a five. I'm trying to, where's my recon? Yes. Six. And Butch spies out on the center of the lake is a small island. And on that island is the familiar arrowhead shape oh. of a scout courier. Yes. All it right. is high and dry indeed. I shall Wait. take. Did what? we just climb this entire volcano only to look over it to the shoreline and see that it's on the island. Why didn't we just go around the volcano? No, sorry. No, At no, the no, top, no. In the crater of the lake. The caldera. There, oh. I'm sorry, in the, cra in the caldera, there's a lake and there's a little island on the lake. I was looking on the map at the <laughs> island and I was like, what the fuck? Why didn't he tell us it was on the island? Well, here, why don't I direct you to a map of the crater? Ooh. Ooh. Okay. I'm getting a uh, crater lake vibes. Oh, yeah, again. totally. Um, so you see the, you know, if you climb down, and you get closer to the lake, you'll see that the lake is deep, but not especially wide. Uh, the water seems warmish and drinkable, though if you taste it, it anybody taste it? Does it taste like sulfur? It tastes a little, yeah, it has an odd mineral taste. Sulfurous. Um, okay, uh, what do you want to do? Uh, so we're at the shore of the lake right now. Yeah, you're probably about here. You. Uh, wow. I wish we could have rented an air raft at some point. That would have uh, 
made this quite a, this bit quite a bit easier. Actually, the last bit too. All of this would have been much easier if we could have vented an air out. Yeah, and you know, based on what the minister told you, that the former crew took the the what is presumably the ship's air raft. I see. That's how they. Ah. That's how they, why they mm. they abandoned here. They got in the air raft and abandoned it. Well, they may have been poorly behaved, but they were clever, clever enough. Um, mm. anyone know how to swim? Ah. Uh. Everybody make yes. an, in, an intellect check. Uh, that would be a 10, but minus 2 for the altitude sickness, so 8. Got a oh. 9. 4 with the altitude sickness. All right, so the captain and Titania, you know, you, you have one of you has years of experience in the Imperial Navy, the other years of experience in the scout service. Together, you're able to you, you look at the woods around you, you able to think based on like the driftwood and the kind of dead trees, you'd be able to make a pretty serviceable raft if you spend, you know, an hour or two uh, that you could float the equipment out behind you because the, the, the crates will float. And then, oh, OK, and then you'll be able to get yourselves out there without too much trouble. Oh, cool. Awesome. Um, anyone, do you want to do that? Uh, let's build a raft. Great. So you you know you start to forage for some good sized pieces of, of wood and some down trees, uh, and then you start to you know you start to lash a raft together. Um, everybody, make a recon check. Ooh. All right. Question. Yes. So I have binoculars. Can I use them somehow to aid my recon stuff? Uh, are you, or is that what you're doing instead of helping build the raft? You're kind of scanning around with binoculars. Uh, no, I help build the raft. I'm, I'm strong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Give me the, give me your re recon checks. All right. Whatever. That would be a great excuse to not help build the raft. <laughs> yeah. like, no, I Sorry, have to guys. look through these binoculars. Seven, eight, nine. A 10 minus two is eight. Four. Eight. Uh, Titania. As you're lashing the raft, you hear a low rumbling oh, sh coming from the woods behind you. The woods? The little, the, the brush forest behind you. Uh, and all of a sudden, this emaciated wolf steps out. Oh, and no. Gro and he growls at you. Roll for initiative. Oh, what? No. oh my God. Oh, okay. my God. Fight the wolf? And now we get into combat. Okay. So let's do a little primer on combat. So initiative is either dex or intellect, depending on what you think you're you're doing. Yeah, uh, which is really cool. Yeah, I think it's really cool. It's like some like yes, if you have excellent reflexes, you can jump quicker. But sometimes, if you're really canny, you know, you can figure out a way to go first. Yeah, yeah. Um, or you spot something that no peop other people might not, and you are able to get the jump on someone that way. Yes. So. Um, we're going to do this theory of the mind, but generally uh, action summary is you get one significant action and one minor action or three minor actions per turn. So a, think of it as a standard and a move is a good, a good equivalent. Um, major actions are basically you can attack. That's, a, that's usually the most common uh, major action, but also can apply, I mean, applying first aid or trying to bypass the security system or issuing orders. Um, so let's say you're attacking with a gun, uh, you'd roll two, you know, 2D plus your gun combat uh, skill with the appropriate specialty plus your dex. Um, and then, but melee, you'd roll 2D plus your melee skill with the appropriate specialty with strength or dex, depending on what you wanted to do and what your character is built like. Uh, most attacks are an, average, are an average skill check, though there are going to be lots of modifiers based on what we get into. Um, and then a minor action is uh, movement. So your movement score, which for most humans is six meters or four squares, if we were doing this on a square map. Uh, aiming is a minor action that gives you a dice modifier plus one on your next attack. And you can spend multiple actions aiming. So you could spend a whole turn just aiming, which would give you a plus three. Mm. Um, you can change your stance. You can draw a weapon. You can reload. Um, yeah, and then free actions, shouting a warning, pushing a button, stuff that I, you know, I as the referee can judge to be free. Um, other stuff, you also have reactions. So if you are, you know, if someone attacks you, you can try to dodge, uh, which you can basically inflict a penalty of your dex DM or your athletics to their role. Uh, and each attack must be dodged separately, though the dice modifier stack. Uh, you can also dive for cover. 
uh, which gives you, you inflicts a penalty of d dice modifier minus two to an attack if you can find something to hide behind. Uh, if you're meleeing, you can also parry. Um, and there's also leadership. I don't. Do either of you, any of you have the leadership? I have skill? leadership. Yeah, so you can use your significant action to pass orders, commands, or suggestions. You make a leadership check, and you can give boons a boon to their role. And uh, a boon is an extra die, so you just okay. take extra dice and you just take the two the two highest results. Um, if you want to get in melee, you have to get within two meters of that of that of that enemy. Sorry, this is gonna be an info dump, but we'll get to it soon. Uh, once you're in within two meters, you're in close combat, uh, and then you can make melee attacks. But you can't attack anybody else, and you can only make melee attacks or single-handed ranged weapons uh, weapon attacks. Or you, if you, anything larger, like your rifle, you'd have to use as a club. Um, and if you move while in close combat, you basically get an immediate equivalent of an attack of opportunity. Um, there's more mechanics, but we'll get into them as we play. Um, what did everyone roll for initiative? Uh, I used my intellect. I rolled an eight uh, minus two for the altitude sickness as a six. Okay. Uh, Butch? I was going to ask, do you think Butch would use his intellect or dexterity in this situation? He's a reporter, and he usually uses his intellect to get himself in and out of situations, but he's in the wilderness, which is not a place he typically is. He's streetwise rather than a survival specialist. I'm going to say dexterity for the flavor of the moment. Okay. Um, so minus one to this roll, and then minus two on top of that. Uh, that'll be a negative one. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Snake eyes. Okay. So. Oh. All right. Titania, what'd you roll? Uh, I rolled a 12 using my dexterity. Okay. And let me just do the wolf. Okay. Um, so, Titania, you get to act first. How far away is the wolf from me? Uh, probably about, let's say he's within a single move action. Okay. Six, six you know, four meters. What, is that what we said? Yeah, four meters. Yeah. No, six meters. T Titania would like to use her. Oh wait. Hmm. I can't move. Oh, and a minor. I can move as my minor action and use an attack. Yeah, you could. I, okay, with this distance. Okay, so Titania would like to sort of do like a roundabout run on the wolf to not run at it straight on. Um, okay. And she's gonna quickly like slide her stunner out. And oh wait. I don't have my stunner. No, you do. You. I'm sorry. We, we, when you left that town, oh, you yeah, were able yeah. to oh, get your stunner back. Oh, I was going to say, back. hold on. This changes everything. <laughs> um, she's going to quick slide her stunner out and try to just like quickly put this wolf, it like incapacitate this wolf and not hurt it. Okay. Um, all right. So you get into melee. So you're going to roll 2D plus uh, melee with the appropriate specialty and then add your strength or dex modifier. Okay. Five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine. Is my melee is one? Yes. Okay. Nine total. Okay. So nice. you're on nine. Uh, the wolf is going to try to dodge. And I think that's going to fail. Oh, no. I, you know, no, uh, yeah. No, that succeeds. So you take a minus one to that roll. So it's an eight. Eight. Okay, you still hit. So how does the stunner work? So the stun is non-lethal, but I do 3D damage. Okay. Uh, but roll. I can't kill it. Roll well, your damage. It, sort of the, one of the house rules I was looking at uh, for this, because creatures don't, like, they usually used to just have hit point pools rather than, like, broken down into uh, attributes like, like player characters do. So ordinarily when, you're, when a character is hit by a stunner, once their endurance goes to zero, they're stunned. Yeah, but monsters or creatures or NPCs just have a hit point pool. So uh, one of the 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 kind of hacks that I saw is if you take a creature, stun them down by a third of their hit point pool, that will stun them. Okay. Mm. Let's okay, do that. so that five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and I don't add anything. It's just three D, correct? Yep. Yes. All right. So that is twelve. Nice. That is, that is exactly one third of its hit point pool. Nice. 
awesome. Wow. So wow. Tanya, thinking quickly, whips out her stunner, runs around, runs, it takes a long way around the wolf and just sticks the stunner on the side, stuns it, and it collapses unconscious. Wow. And then I think she immediately like, puts her hand on it, makes sure it's still breathing. Um, and she turns and back to the group. Do any of you have any jerky uh, or uh, meat substitutes or anything we could leave for it? Um, I do. I do, actually. I have some rations here, and I always insist on turkey jerky. So I have some of that. And he, like, goes over and, like, lays it down in front of its, in front of its mouth. So hopefully that, that will occupy it once it comes to... It's like, I have to say, Titania, that was incredibly impressive. I, I suppose the uh, ISS trains their agents a little better than we were told they do in the, in the Navy. Ah, uh, yeah, you got to see some of that in action. I uh, prefer to use the stunner. Uh, normally we work on inhabitable planets and with uh, other species, and I never try to hurt something, but uh, this wolf looks hungry. I wonder why. It does. Do any of you have animals as a skill? No. I mean, you could, Grant can roll with Jack of all trades, so go ahead and roll, sure. roll that, Grant. Modified by intellect or education? Uh, this would be... Education, I believe. Hey. And then uh, you take you do it at a minus two because you have the jack of all trades skill. Oh, that is a cool skill. 11 yeah. on the die, which takes me down to a seven with the altitude sickness. Oh. Okay, wow. Because, uh, right? It's that's minus, for, that's it's still minus good. two. Minus yeah, two, still but good. then a minus two from the altitude sickness, so. Yeah, this is just a routine check. You recognize this as a Tenture's wolf, Ooh. which is a species of wolf uh, popular as pets on space vessels. Oh, what? this was the dog that they had on the ship. <gasps> oh, thank I God you it. stunned it. I take it with us. Does it have a collar? <laughs> it does not have a collar, um, but yes. I scan it, for its chip. <laughs> 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 um, yes, it's a, uh, yeah. I mean, it's stunned right now, so it's unconscious, but maybe you can Well, let's, what do you want to do? You, you, you're still on the, this side of the shore. Do you want to take your raft out to the island to look at the ship? I secure the wolf to a box. I latch it to a box and I float it alongside me. <laughs> so bobbing along on top of the equipment case is just this unconscious, emaciated wolf that just tried to eat you. And, and I the turkey tie jerky. The, I tie the turkey jerky to its oh, mouth. Thank Thank God. Great. Do we? What do um, we do with the chicken on this side before we return on the raft, though? Oh, okay. <laughs> and what about the we green of rice? The, yeah. All right, we bring the chicken the across. Rice. I tie the turkey jerky to a small stick in front of the wolf, so when it wakes up, it doesn't eat the chicken. I've never heard of this problem with the turkey jerky before. It changes <laughs> yeah, the whole that's thing. A, that's a whole. That's a novel solution. Wow. To an All ancient right. problem. So you float the wolf, the turkey jerky, and you leave behind the goose. And <laughs> when you get to the island and you're able to survey the ship, uh, you see that the hatches are all closed. But just about what looks like just about everything inside of it has been dumped outside. It's a huge mess. Like what? Made worse by the fact that it looks like some kind of animal has been raking through it for food. Oh, um, no. So roll. Who has uh, you have? Does one of you have engineer or mechanic? I do. Uh, yeah, I do too. Go ahead and roll. Uh, oh, wait. Yes, no, I do. Uh, eight with the sickness. Okay. Six. Okay. I mean, you're able to see, you'd have to get inside, but it seems like the crew seems to have attempted a repair. And then after they apparently couldn't it was that's the report you got from the scout service they stripped everything of value they could carry and dumped everything else on the ground and then left with the ship's air raft guys were assholes what I is the dog i uh, have roll, to say this this recon. does not reflect on the scout service and yeah. uh, no. honestly i would i would never and i'm going to report them I myself just saw this how is... well you handled yourself and now i'm looking at this and there seems <sighs> to be quite a variation in uh, levels of uh, conduct in your, your organization it's a seven recon for me. Okay. Yeah, you find among you so you find a bunch of ration packets that have all been ripped open clearly by an animal. Mm -hmm. And then among the wreckage you also find a forlorn metal food bowl licked clean like oh, a long no. time ago. Oh, with the name my God. Kimbley hand stamped on the side of it. Kimbley? Oh, Kimbley. Kimbley. Oh, Kimbley. I'm sorry. Can wolves, can wolves swim? Yeah. Oh, okay. 
So yeah, it's clearly the the wolf, you know, was abandoned by these by these assholes, and He's then fucking. I can't believe it. It's it's. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is not how a scout would act. I think um, uh, I think Aaron Bridger had a Jack Russell Terrier when he was on board, <laughs> <laughs> like like a uh, uh, Gene Hackman's character mm-hmm. in, in the uh, Crimson Crimson Tide. So he's a, yeah he's a huge dog lover. So like he, this is this is like he's a murderous a full of murderous rage right now. I think um, I, I think Titania turns to Jude too and she's like don't include this in the article. Don't speak badly <laughs> about the scouts. I I swear we're not I, this is I don't know what happened here. I uh, I don't think this reflects poorly on you Titania. This is these are rogue agents clearly and if I reference them at all I'll reference them as rogue agents. Thank you. All right. Uh, do you want to head inside the ship? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you have uh, you have you have entry codes, so you could just enter them at the airlock, or you could try to manually pry the doors open. Why? The why codes? It's an why would you code, not sir, but try it checks the codes? Out. <laughs> well, it, <laughs> I mean, you might you you who knows, right? Like the pa- ship could have no power. You know, you know they might have when I go to house. Matthew's house, I could ring the buzzer. But what I do is, is I pull out my crowbar and I wrench the front door open. No, Crawl you out know on why? the ledge outside and shatter one of the windows. Because <laughs> Matthew, Matthew always traps his doors. So I don't trust this <gasps> ship. Can we, can we check for traps? Ooh, that's smart. <laughs> recon. Uh, sure, is that well, a recon. Thing? Well, I'll roll engineering, engineering. Yeah, roll I think engineering I roll, or recon. Yeah, I'd like to do an engineering on the door just to see, or like, mechanic. if the codes, if the codes would make sense. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's no trap on the door. <laughs> All right. It's totally safe. Okay. So you enter the codes. Beep, 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 beep. The ship explodes. <laughs> oh, no! God damn it, it. Matthew! You're, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, you're able to get in. There's just enough power left to to get to open the airlock. And inside the ship is a total mess. Jeez. You see very clearly Christ. that in addition to all of, all of like stripping it for parts that they try to do, uh, they never like you take a walk around and they never seem to take proper care of the ship when it was their home. And the, the process of leaving wasn't very gentle. And, I mean, virtually every panel is open. The covers are ripped off. Everything that has a cover components are strewn all over the decks. Just suffice it to say, putting it together back together is going to be a big job. Unbelievable! They haven't Unbelievable. checked the bathroom. Look at the bathroom chart. Oh, they haven't I checked it the, in a year. I thought the one back at the port authority was bad. This is much worse. The duties are all over the chore charts. No, nobody's. I. Oh, this is so frustrating Terrible. for me. I would Just never leave my ship. Disgusting. The smell alone. This will take weeks. Why would why would Minister Greener and the dictator be relying on such rank amateurs to get anything done? Anyone who take care of a ship like this, you couldn't trust them as far as you could throw them. Hmm. We made a mistake there. Well, I think um, the scout service made a mistake even employing them. Yeah. Agreed. Um. Well, who let's- said that? <laughs> <laughs> Show yourself. <laughs> oh, I put, I put, I put Kimberly. I put Kimberly in. The first thing I fix up is Kimberly's little holding area because he or she is going to freak out when they wake up. So I put them in their crate or cage, and I put the jerky in fresh water, and I clean it out. There you go. There you go. All right. Nice job. I don't um, want to get bit by a wolf. No, that would be bad. They do a lot of damage. Um, <laughs> uh, what do you were you about to say, Skid? I would say I, I would maybe the first step is to just start gathering all of the cargo, the components and everything that they tossed out, start gathering it all and just bring it back into the ship so that we can have everything in there that we need to fix it up. Okay. Yeah. You want to do that? Yeah. Um, Seems like a good first step. Those of you who have engineering or mechanic, go ahead and give me a roll. Just like, let's say you like, you bring all the stuff in and then you want us want to take like, you want to assess what, like, what's the damage? What's going on? Like, what do you need to do here? What's the, what, what is this job going to be? Um, uh, that was a six. I rolled a nine, but I think I'm, Titania's more interested in what can she get up and working to check on like the seismograph stuff, the original mission. Um, let alone just like mm. making the ship work. 
Okay. Well, um, so basically what you figure out is this. The ship, uh, the repair is going to be relatively straightforward, ultimately, uh, given the equipment you brought. You have to clean up the mess, you know, get organized, use the equipment you brought with you, and mostly... This is the good thing. The repair is going to mostly take the form of removing a large number of demountable circuit blocks and either bypassing them or replacing them, depending on how essential they are, and then use your portable download diagnostic unit that can ascertain if a system is usable. And you know that basically you're going to have to get four main systems repaired. Flight control and navigational systems. General shipboard electronics. That's throughout the ship. Uh, the flight controls are obviously on the bridge. Uh, power systems electronics is in engineering and drive systems electronics is also in engineering. So each job mechanically is going to take you 1D plus two hours. And if Titania shows you how to do it, you know, she's got an engineering background. Uh, it actually will be pretty much unskilled work and it will just be an electronics check at the, each, at the, at the end of each job. Um, so you could divide and conquer. Like Titania is going to have to kind of assess and it's her ship. Also, she's the one with the engineering background. Um, the other thing Titania as a dutiful member of the scout service, and I'm sure Captain Bridger would support this as well. Once you get everything up and up, up and running again, you're going to have to do tests. Like you're going to have to do some ground tests of all the systems. And then you have to do some sort of low altitude shakedown flight because inevitably with any kind of thing like this, some sort of problem is going to appear that needs to be fixed. And without that flight, without that test flight, you're going to be, you know, operating at a disadvantage. So, uh, and then, yeah, once you get, uh, once you get the system, you know, there's a lot of work you can do on the survey mission um, before you get the systems up and running. So uh, you can be, you know, that mostly involves placing a series of seismic charges and then detonating them. And the, the charges you eventually find amongst the stuff on the ship just kind of strewn about in a frighteningly haphazard manner. Um, but yeah, so basically that would take, that will take you, you would assess 10 hours to do quickly and 20 hours to carry out properly. Um, but first thing, I mean, first things first, before you even get to the repairs, you have to clean out the filth and mess in the ship and make it livable. Um, you need like the air filters aren't even in place. You have to find those. That's going to take you a few days. So you have some, you know, you have some time. If you divide and conquer, you should be able to do all of that. Uh, it's just going to, you know, take you some time. Uh, all right. Just a little bit of elbow grease. We'll get this hunk of junk up and running and you'll have yourself a ship. All right, um, so let's. Uh, who's gonna re who's gonna do what system? So I do and have electronics computers. So if you get electronic, I, this is something I looked into, but I I never actually found the answer. If you get like electronics, a rank in electronics over your career, and you specialize in something, do you do you automatically get rank zero in all the other electronics? I don't, I, I wondered about this too, and I don't think so. I feel like okay. it actually functions as like knowledge arcana, knowledge engineering, right? Like they're actually, even though there's like a... I, the only reason I ask is because I swear to God, I saw a demo. I think it was Seth Skorkowski, whose videos we should shout out. He does great traveler videos. Uh, he has a YouTube channel. I think I saw one of his demos that you get you get a point in that, and it was like a zero in all the other categories. I swear, but I don't, I don't specifically remember that. So, Hold okay. on, I found a section on it in the rule book. There we go. <laughs> talk amongst yourselves while I decide. Why don't you guys you know, talk well, about who's going to do what while I read Even this. if that doesn't work out for us, the good thing is, as far as electronics, is you have computers, I have comms. Uh, the only other two categories are remote ops and sensors. So maybe we have enough between the three of us to do something, do some damage, and some repair and also, damage. Titania has a uh, life support, so she could do anything oh, that good. pertains to like, yeah, the ship air filters and all that stuff. That's good. All right, I have your I have your answers, kid. Okay. So check technically, you're not supposed to take a specialty until level one. So you have so if you take if you get a, you have a level zero of engineer, right? You can roll all engineering checks at level zero, so at no penalty. But then if you add if you add the level one, you get that only in one specialty, you pick a specialty. But you can still roll all the other engineering checks at as a level zero. Once it, but don't you when is it a plus one like when you get the skill, like during your career? Like you don't get it at zero, right? You get it at one. But then you, you can, can choose your specific one and then you roll everything else at zero. No, it starts at zero and then one. Though sometimes you get the skill at one. 
Like sometimes yeah. you get, sometimes depending on what you roll on your tables, you get like, you know, piloting one, persuade one, but then sometimes you level up and then you have to work your way up from zero. Right. So, yeah. So if you have engineer, you have engineering what, Skid? Uh, no, electronics. Electronics. Yeah. But you have comms, but you'd be able to roll electronics with no penalty. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, okay. So who's doing what? Uh, I think Bridger is just gonna, uh, he's gonna get a mop. And, <laughs> okay. um, I'll, let's, we'll all hand wave that. You all spend like, you know, you spend a couple days cleaning up the ship, just literally just cleaning it. Kimberly wakes up, is strangely appreciative about the food. Okay. Uh, maybe you know, one of you starts to form a bond with Kimberly, you know, slowly feeding her. She's still pretty feral because, you know, this has been a wolf, harf, a wolf and she was abandoned by her people and left here. And yeah, but maybe like after a few days, she starts to, to trust you. Um, okay. I'm going to roll to see how many days pass before, to get it cleaned up. Okay. One day. So you one okay. day, one, it takes one big day of, of cleaning and you're able to scrub everything down and get everything organized. What's the Mary Poppins song? The cleaning song? Whistle while you work? No, that's that's Snow White. That's Snow um, White. What is this cleaning song? What is the cleaning uh, song? Step in time, step in time. I don't know. I'm not I'm looking at it. of sugar? No, that's a, that's that, a, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. That's All right, who's, let's walk through these. Who's going to do flight controls and navigational systems? Uh, I will, because, well, unless you want to, Grant, but I would argue that with my um, my knowledge in... Uh, where is it? I have it. My jump jet knowledge and my engineering that I would be able to do that. So the, the reality is that you, Titania, probably could repair all of these. And especially like there's also the two systems in engineering that need attention as well. And you can like if you like, so you could do all of them or you could divide and conquer. So. And if you divide and conquer, you'll get out of here faster. That's the only, and I, I am tracking the days. So that's the only, well, the only. if I do the astrogation, what, what would be the other category that, uh, Jude would have to fill? Uh, I mean, there's the general shipboard electronics and he's got Jack of all trades and you know, it's pretty straightforward. And then there's the flight controls and navigational systems. Is there, okay, so, so, sorry, can we get the, the life support up and running so that we can get rid of the altitude sickness? Oh, Ooh, that's could a I do good that? idea. Yeah. Um, I think that would fall under general shipboard electronics. Okay. Then I will do that. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, I'm going to roll, roll to see how many hours it takes. It takes four hours, and I need an electronics check. Oh, that's a six and a four, six, seven, eight. Okay. Eight. Yep. Twelve. Yeah, oh, you're crushed you're it. you're fine. Yeah, you get the you get the electronics. You replace all the electronics, uh, and then you replace the uh, the software. You do the software upgrade, which was the big oh, thing right. they they asked you about. And you do a you know, full hard reset on the system and install a new operating system. Awesome. And yeah, you're able to get the operating system. And I'll, I'll say like over the course of the next day, your altitude sickness goes away, Captain. Sick. Awesome. Cool. Um, okay. Who? And then we need flight controls and navigational systems. You want to take uh, that, Captain? Yeah, I'll do that. All right, give me a. So this, I'm doing this simultaneous to her work on this, so I still get the penalty for the for the, for the altitude sickness. Great. Uh, it takes you three hours. And this is education modifier. Yeah, electronic. education modifier. Uh, that is uh seven. Okay. Yep. You're fine. It takes you three awesome. hours. You're able to get uh, flight controls and nav systems back online. Thanks. And then uh, that we just got power systems, electronics, and engineering, and drive systems, electronics, and engineering. Come on, Butch. All right. I'm going to use my jack of all trades here unless this falls under electronics com. Or can I roll electronics at, at a zero for any of these, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Here it comes. Uh... This would be a eight before the life support systems took over and changed every or no an eight after the life control systems took over and helped everything a six if it happens before we get that taken care of. Okay, you nail it. However, it does take you seven hours, so oof, it takes you. Oof. You're able to yeah. do it. Just takes you a little longer. Not your not your specialty. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then Titania, are you taking care of drive systems? Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. 
Especially, it's her ship. She's the best at it, and she's the only one who's still not suffering under altitude sickness penalty. That's true. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That would be my engineering. Oh. Eleven. Total. Yeah, you you crush it. Let's see how long it takes you. Uh, it takes you six hours, but it is a jump drive. So, all right. I've got the Pretty oil. Good. I'm doing the little thing where I scoot under the ship and I scoot back out. <laughs> So that one actually is not simultaneous, but then that leaves you, you know, if you, the, the, the other two of you want to get involved in the survey mission, that would give you time to do that. Yeah. I think I, on the jump drive. Oh, I yeah, think yeah, I say don't I don't have time for, for it. That. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, do you, are you doing it quickly or are you doing it properly? <laughs> the survey or the yeah. jump drive? The survey. Uh, I want to do it properly. I want to do a good job. Okay. So you'll be able to start it today, and then you'll spend the night in the ship, you know, get the altitude sickness, flush the altitude sickness out. <laughs> yeah. You have to flush altitude sickness out, but acclimate yeah. yourself, and then you can, you can finish it tomorrow. Um, yeah. So basically, this entails placing a series of ground sensors um, all around the crater and in some of these lava tubes, uh, and you have to place some charges in the lava tubes as well. Okay. And then once the ship is up and running, you can detonate those charges and let the ship's computer roll, excuse me, create a 3D model of the volcano. Um, okay. So, and then it's going to match up, when it matches up with readings from more sophisticated sensors, uh, like the ship's uh, densi densitometer, it will allow the computers to predict when the er an eruption is likely. Oh, this cool. is this is turning very alien covenant. I know, I'm just picturing covenant with the little, <laughs> the little buzzing <laughs> drones like going around mapping the, the interior. Yeah, that's cool. Um, okay, so while you're, uh, let's say you place all those, you take that, you do it right, you spend all the time. At this point, Kimberly maybe is like, no, uh, by the end, it's been, let me just check, it's been like four days at this point. Wow. So, Wow. So Kimberly, because you had to clean it up and then you had to work on this and then you know, work on the ship and then, yeah. And then Kimberly, uh, Kimberly starts to nuzzle maybe next to, next to, who, who, who did Kimberly? I think Titania. I think Titania is the one. Yeah, Kimberly starts closest. to nuzzle next to Titania. Maybe you yeah. let her out of her crate. She's still, she's, she's still, she still snaps at the other two, but you, you you're working on her. I didn't I knock you out, dog. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't knock you out. I, it was my turkey jerky. Don't don't forget. <laughs> Titania keeps pressing turkey jerky into their palms, and she's like, "Just open your hand and give it to her at the palm open." <laughs> okay. And Titania and then Kimberly is like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then maybe she maybe she licks one of your hands. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, I miss who? Lafayette. My Jack Russell Terrier. <laughs> oh, Lafayette. Lafayette. Oh, Lafayette. Oh my God. That's a good name for Jack Russell Terrier. <laughs> oh. All right. So uh, at the end of this, uh, I'm going to need some rolls on this survey job. So does anyone have explosives? No. All right. You have to roll untrained or Mr. Jack of all trades can set oh, some explosives. Oh, I think Mr. Jack. Jack it up, Jack baby. Jack up. Is that an elect? Or what is explosive? I'm going to call that education. Yeah. yeah. You don't you don't innately know how to, how to set charges, I don't think. Like Come Danny on, McBride's character in Tropic Thunder wasn't super smart, but he was <laughs> educated in how to use explosives. Yeah. Nine goes down Ooh. to seven with Jack of all trades. Okay. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, it was a routine check. And you uh, nice. set the charges. That would be a very you, tense moment if no one knew how to do that <laughs> on a ship. <laughs> I'm kind of good at everything, so <laughs> let me just right. try my hand at this. I think you may have read my articles online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So then maybe you come back to the ship to set off the charges and make the 3D model, right? Like, yeah. All right. So you're standing on the bridge and okay. So this is going to be uh, an electronics sensors or science planetology role for uh to do to make the model to like run the systems when you oh. when you detonate it uh okay i do i might i might be the best for this with my electronic zero just with my education who is your education for sure yeah yeah okay I'll... go ahead and rake that roll okay uh that is an 11. Ooh. okay Yes, that is more than enough 
uh, and you're able to you see that you you set off the charges. You just hear like poof in the distance, and you see some little you know little puffs of dirt fly up, and then the data starts feeding into the, the ship's computers, and you you're sitting there working at it like making you're just like kind of fielding it and like setting up setting up the algorithm to kind of you know make sure everything's working properly. Yeah. Um, at that moment though, Titania, roll recon. Uh oh. No. Uh oh. Oh no. I'm like I'm like very far away, right? What could no, go wrong? What you're on the bridge. Wrong? Everyone's on the bridge right now. We're on oh, the bridge. Okay. What could go wrong? <laughs> Take it to the bridge. Setting 11? off explosives in a barely dormant volcano on a strange <laughs> planet. What could go wrong? Uh, Eleven. I'm I'm petting Kimberly, but I am paying attention. Uh, you notice on the other side of the lake, three guys are swimming out towards the ship. What? Kill him! Kill him! <laughs> And we'll see you next week. Oh, no, oh my no, God. I want to kill the no. three guys. I want to kill these Why guys. Why do you immediately oh. want to kill the three? Now I don't trust either of you. Because I didn't mean to, to kill the wolf. I wanted to kill the wolf. the dog. You just and should look how, people. And look what happened. The wolf is our best friend now. Oh, yeah. Not due to because of them. Not because of anything they did. If they had their way, it should be starving to death out there in a volcano. These are the I dudes my, that I have, use my binoculars. They abandoned Kimberly. It's time for revenge. It's Why time for Kimberly. So That's a, the title of episode three. Kimberly's revenge. Kimberly's revenge. <laughs> Speaking of episodes, right. by the way, I got to pitch something. Oh, yeah, I got to so plug. Uh, oh. Tomorrow night, October 28th at 9 o'clock p.m. Uh, my other my movie podcast that I do, Franchise Fan Guys. Andy, uh, Tom, and myself are going to be doing a live, uh, like a chat over one of our favorite franchises, the Alien franchise, funnily enough, uh, most appropriately. Uh, tickets are $10. Uh, hopefully Brennan or someone will throw in a link right now. If not, go to at Franchise Fan Guys on Twitter. There'll be a link there. Uh, please, everybody show up as a personal favor to me. If you've ever loved me or appreciate anything I've done, Please, we need our partners to think that we're cool, so that would be amazing if you could do that. But hopefully see you tomorrow night, 9 p.m. for Franchise Fan Guys Live. We'll be talking about Alien. Hell yeah! And then, you, and then you can catch us, if you're in the New York area, Glass Cannon Live at the Gramercy Theater on the 30th. I do. All we'll right. be in costume, not this one. We'll, we'll be in costume. <laughs> All right, good night, everybody. Bye. See you next night, week. Guys.